me, Kazi, and I'm here with... Your boy, Papa React. What's up, guys? Yo, let's go, guys. I'm so excited to be here. Welcome to an amazing, amazing day where we're going to be talking about React Native. That's it. React Native. <laughs> React Native, guys. You know, we all love React. We've all come to love React on the channel. But we want to take it a step further and show you guys if you want to build an iOS app, an Android app, we're going to show you how to do that today. And the fun part is, is that we haven't prepared. So it's going to be very unscripted. It's going to be very, you know, we're going to keep it real with you guys. We're going to be going through this together, exploring this together, building this app out together. It's going to be fun, dude. It's going to be super fun. And for this one, I'm actually really, really excited because not going to lie, for some of the other ones that are over prepared, sometimes it's boring going through those because... We kind of already know what's going to happen. The interaction part is fun, but uh, yeah. interacting with everybody. But like, this is personally exciting for me, Sonny, because I get to learn in this and I actually want to learn React Native. Exactly, dude. Exactly. And the thing is, I coded React Native quite heavily about two years ago. So even I'm a bit rusty with it, but I built some crazy stuff with React Native. So I'm excited to jump back into that. I'm excited to go ahead and get Kazi involved in this stuff and just get stronger in this so we can all go ahead and build some crazy apps together. But um, yeah, this is the start of a huge series. Ooh, so it's exciting ooh. stuff. Were you doing, um, when you said you were building stuff with it, were you doing stuff with Tipple? No, so Tipple, it wasn't, it wasn't for Tipple, it was for a company I worked at. Um, I had never coded React Native before. I was a full stack developer at the time, so I'd just done React. And it was in the deep end. I hadn't done Redux either. So it was Redux and React Native in one. So I just had to like just thrown in the deep end, just catch a wave as it was running. So, yeah. but um, yeah, if, if, if I could do it in that situation, guys, we're going to break it down to a point where you don't even have to know how to put like pretty much code. I'm going to make it super easy for you guys to go ahead and understand hey. that. Oh, first donation. Yo, what's Karen. up, bro? We're up to 456 concurrent viewers. And actually, my stream deck is telling me we're at 531 concurrent viewers. Let's get it. Uh, nice. Let's go, man. Thank you for the donations that are coming in. Guys, if you want this video to go out and you want us to do a lot more of these, there's only one thing you need to do to make that happen. It doesn't cost you anything. What is it, Sonny? All you have to do is you see that little shiny button right now, which isn't at, it's not at 500 yet. You got to go and smash that thumbs up button, guys, and get that number up so that this video goes out to as many people. And we can help more people reach this amazing content on the channel. That's all we need you to do, guys. That's right. I, I, I messed up my uh, stream deck for a second, so I freaked out. But we just <laughs> broke 600. 600 concurrent viewers, guys. That is amazing. Um, if you want this type of content and you want to learn React Native and you want to go on a journey with two bros trying to learn React Native, making mistakes, fucking up, having fun, then subscribe to this channel so you can be on this journey with us. Exactly, guys. We're just going to be going through this together. You're going to see all the moments where we get stuck. We want to punch the keyboard. We want to throw our shit out the window. We're going to do all of that. Keep it real for you guys. Oh, dude, coming in hot. Look at the, the, the super chat that just flew Oh, let's go. We're back, hey, baby. Zach Cooler, you are amazing, dude. He says, Kazi and Sonny, you guys are the best. Thank you for firing me up all the time and actually making coding exciting. Love you guys, man. Want to join your courses soon. Damn. <laughs> Yo. Dude, Sonny, we got to do this a lot more often, man. Did you forget yeah. how this felt? Yeah, man. God, it's like, a, you know, it's, it's fun, dude. We're going to be back. Guys. Do you guys miss this duo? Me and Kazi miss this. We man. miss this. It's fun for us. We're going to be back with this stuff. People are like, Kazi, speak in Hindi. Kya hal hai ka? Ye mehu Kazi. Aap ka? <laughs> we should fucking start doing that. <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> Let's go. All right, so... Where do we get started, Sonny? Should I click get started? Is that the first step? Yeah, let's just do it together, dude. So let's click on get started. All right. And I've do done a bit of uh, like a run through roughly earlier. So because there are things like uh, one thing to know is if you're using a Mac, it's a lot easier. You're going to probably need a Mac when you're doing this. Everything so, is easier with Mac. And also download uh, Xcode, right? Yeah. So download Xcode. So Xcode for free. It's in the App Store. All you need to do is go ahead and download that. You're going to need 
the developer tools that get installed when you set up Xcode. So that's pretty much that. Mm -hmm. um, you, you might also see this thing called Expo. So like this little coding box has like Expo on the top, right? Yeah. Now we're going to cover that at another point, but we're going to be doing it all through the, the sort of the raw installation way. But we're going to go through Expo on another day and show you how you can actually get up and running really quickly with Expo. Yeah, Cause that's, that's really cool, dude, Expo. I would say that anybody who is gonna have trouble installing stuff, if you wanna follow us along, you can even follow us along and do stuff right here on Expo. That way you can't possibly fuck up. Like your that's installation true. is not gonna, especially if you're on Windows or something like, that's gonna make that's your a really life good point. Yeah, cause you know, when I was coding before, they didn't, uh, when I was doing React Native, they didn't have Expo. So a lot of people who are hitting Windows were getting kind of hit and miss, but that's true, dude. So anyone who, who can't install it or runs into any issues, go ahead and try it out with Expo. Bro, uh, we're, up, we're at 620, bro. <laughs> that's, cool. that's what I'm talking about, dude. Over 500 likes. That's it, guys. All right. That's awesome. Dope. So what's happening here now? What's our next step? So next step is let's go ahead and find... You can put on um, your music, by the way, Sonny. What's up? You can put on your music, by the way. Oh, does it come through? Like, if I do this? Hell yeah. Nice, dude. Mm -hmm. Hey, let me quickly find the the next step, because um, where is it gone? React. Let's go ahead and do React. Native installation. Set up the development environment. Setting up development environment. Okay, here we go. So... Expo. Try. We don't want to use Expo today. We'll do it using the normal thing. Yo. Yep. I, I mean, I'm just waiting. Oh shit! I just changed the text, bro. I just typed nice, in yo dude. here. All right. Let's see what's happening. So, uh, looks like a React component type of thing. So it looks very Reacty. And then yeah, I got I found, my justify. I, I had a really good tutorial starting point. What the fuck is it going? Shit. Um, it's all good, bro. Take your time. I'm learning here. I'm learning. I'm going to actually uh, make this bigger so everybody else can see it. Yeah. Oh, damn. Nice. Victor Atencio. What happened? Hold on. Check that out, dude. Hold on. Let's see here. Oh, shay, yay, yay. Yo, let's go. Victor just dropped a $25 donation. That is absolutely insane. Where are my fucking air horns when I need them? Here we go. That's what I'm about. And he goes, yeet. I've been waiting for this content. Let's get it. Yo, Sonny, you're right, man. People were waiting on the React Native content. You had That's your it, finger man. on the trigger right there. All right. Yeah, I'm waiting for this shit. Exactly. Um... Okay, let me check Expo right now. So, all right, dude, I'm going to drop you a link now. And I'll send it so on I Slack. I got my so styling can... in one place. All right, I'm oh. looking at it. Nice. There we go. Uh, Facebook guy says, um, Sonny and Kazi, you guys are super exceptional. I'm currently on the Amazon clone with React.js and getting it complete well with me as a complete beginner on the web development space okay i will be finishing soon and proceed to the netflix and others i'm martin from ghana yo that is epic brother yo what's up martin from ghana that's awesome man i love the fact that so many of you now have gone through the amazon clone so like it's really really awesome to see that and i see so many little tweaks and changes that each like each of you have made really really cool to see um, um all right yeah, so, so we're here i opened nice. it up right so, so if you go down, so there's two options when you use a, a React Native app, right? So firstly, any of you who don't know what React Native is, it's basically using React. So you have HTML, CSS, JavaScript. React is like a, imagine React just is a big circle around those three things. It allows us to build really powerful apps, right? Then React Native, once you know how to code in React, so if you've done anything in React before, every single piece of knowledge that you know from React is applicable here, right? So you can pretty oh. much go ahead and take that knowledge to React Native, and then you can pretty much build iOS and Android apps. So if we go down to uh, click on React Native CLI Quick Start. All right, I'm and then just, I'm just signifying right. that React is pretty much like re applies, all React knowledge applies to React Native. My face is hiding exactly. it, so let me move my face and back. 
All right, yeah. here we go. Every bit of knowledge that you know from React, exactly, all transferable over. Uh, so that's React hooks, all that fun stuff, pretty much take it all over with you. Um, so now what we want to do is if let's go down to... Learn the basics. So you see where it says, it says Xcode and um, you're on the right page, right? Is it? Getting started yeah. page, right? That's the one you sent me? Or yeah, this is the one. Yeah. So if you go down to installing dependencies. Um, okay. Installing depend. I literally, I'm oh, command the link, the link I sent you on, um, oh, you got to click on, you see where it says react native CLI quick start. Yeah. That's the one you go click on that. There we go. Then scroll down. Mm. Right. So now what we need to do is we need to install a few things. So the first Jesus. thing is you have to install something called homebrew. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. So if you don't already have homebrew, there's a little link. You can click on that and it will show you how to install homebrew. Okay. But what we can do next, once we have homebrew installed, you'd have to do brew install node and that's going to install something called node.js on your machine and then brew install watchman. So we need should to Should I sure do node or do I already these. have node? Um, you should already have node. If, if this isn't a new computer, right? I have no idea when was the last time I used this computer. It was a while ago. Okay, so to test it, uh, firstly, make it super big, your, your terminal, so we can, uh, we can all see that. Oh, okay. So Sorry. come on, come on, plus, yeah, there we go. Because I'm on and a then, giant TV, it's actually, like, massive now for me in person. <laughs> like, terminal, oh, really? like, literally <laughs> really? bigger than my fucking face. It's, like, bigger than yeah. my chest and my head. Oh, no, oh, nice. I've got a reference over here. Yeah, I can see that. Nice. So now what we're going to do is type in node dash dash v. Let me try. I think it's node dash dash v. Uh, no, node dash v. Yeah, node dash v. I have node, bro. I just typed in node and it okay. showed me what you I You have did. node, right? Yeah. That's purpose. We don't need to install node, but what you might need to do is type in brew install watchman. Dude, I watched this clip on Dr. Manhattan from Watchmen. Yeah. on youtube and it's fucking have you ever watched uh watchmen the movie ages ago i can't remember it but i remember it was a decent film the yeah. blue the blue dude is like he's like a god or something right yeah <laughs> pretty fucking sick so once dude i got my cup of coffee man i'm i'm feeling good bro exactly dude that's it I'm gonna get back into this all right so we once it does so homebrew can sometimes take a while to set everything up and do its thing. But if we go down to, you know where it says Xcode and CocoaPods. So Xcode is, is basically how you would build an iOS app, right? So if you're writing, oh my God. Damn, Holy dude. shit, Holy bro. What shit. is happening? Nawazuddin. <laughs> Air horns for him. And he goes, just in time. Like a compiler for what I needed and wanted to do, buddy. Sunny and Kazi, you all are an inspiration. Make that code available somewhere later, please. All right, brother, you got it. You go ahead, dude. You Yo, ahead. we already crossed almost $100 in donation. That's kind of pretty awesome. That's insane, dude. That is crazy. Holy yeah, crap. That is awesome. Man, I'm excited. Damn. I know, man. And there's almost, there's nearly, there's nearly 700 people concurrently watching this right now. Bro, we got to make uh, the, the, the profit, the app that I was talking about where students can log their freelancing income. Yeah. And then we can have a dashboard view of it. We should make that with React Native. Yeah, we should 100%. And, and then we can actually put it in the app store or whatever and let students go there and give it a reason like we can actually publish an app with react native in ios and an android yeah that'll be sick man and it will show everyone that it's actually real you know what we're doing also kazi go ahead hit a new uh hit a new tab quickly go to reactnative.com i want to show everyone something which is insane like um so on that home screen that we were on when we started off so react native uh you'll see they've actually got if you scroll down to the bottom that's, I didn't even know that, that some of these apps were not this one. Um, <laughs> yo, Samit's in the house. Thank you, dude, for the five dollar donation. He goes, good to see you guys together again. I hey, oh, love that. Samit you. actually landed a job uh, with a company called MathWorks. A crazy salary, dude. Um, oh yeah, you talked was, about that. Yeah. With React so Native, you landed a job. 
Um, I think it was, I think it was React. But Sumit, if you, if it was React Native, let us know in the comments. Um, but yeah, killed it, man. Really awesome. Um, he's always watching these streams as well. So yeah. scroll to the bottom of React this this page. Uh huh. And you'll see. Check this out right at the bottom. Okay, give it a try. This run this. A little bit up, a little bit more up. Uh, there we go. Look how many app, look at these apps that are using React Native. Oh yeah, I was looking at it earlier actually. Yeah, that's insane. We've got Tesla, Uber Eats, Instagram, Coinbase, Discord, Shopify, Facebook. It's crazy, man. Devin Gray, hey, he goes, you stole my project idea, five dollar donation. JK, keep up the great content. I'm here for more React hey. Native apps. Yo, Devin, what's up? You better have read that oh book, bro. Oh my, Devin! But what the fuck, bro? <laughs> Holy oh shit! Sh Holy crap! <laughs> wow, dude! Wow, another donation! Oh my god, that's insane! Jesus! So he says, um, read this. What is happening here? Add to broadcast. My computer can't keep up. Farzad. Coming in hot with a hundred dollar donation. Thank you so much. And he says, I'm a full stack dev at a Fortune 100 company. I've learned more from your vids than any other bootcamp or online tutorial I've completed. Very much looking forward to the React Native series. Keep up the great work. Yo, I'm screenshotting this and um, I am, um, yeah, just smile at the camera, Sonny. There we go. Nice. nice. All right. And I'm sending this. Same. Oh my God, that's insane. Thank you so much, Fazad. That's like, that's incredible, dude. Full stack dev at Fortune 100 company. Says he learned more from our video from our videos than any online bootcamp or any online tutorial. So that's insane, right? So React Native coming your way, dude. So if you're interested and you're already excited, then that, that is awesome, man. Another <laughs> massive donation by wow. Joseph Chu as well. $5, you guys are so awesome. Do your man builds have CRUD functionality. I mean, you can you can take what we've shown you and build it with CRUD 100%. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Guys, smash the like button if you're enjoying this so far and having a great time. I know that we are. We're up to 700 viewers. Oh, we're back in business, baby. Hey. I'm excited about this. Holy crap. <laughs> oh, man. Literally across Facebook as well, nearly 800 view, uh, concurrent. Dude. Me drinking water, is that reminding you to drink water too? Yeah. You know, I was just sitting here thinking, shit, usually this is why I used to bring three bottles of water when I was at Kazi Life. <laughs> <laughs> Man, insane. All right, dope. Let's go, bro. Let's go, dude. Okay, so what's next? What are we up to? Just firstly, another thank you to Brian Kim. $5 donation. New education system right here. Thank you for the education. P.S. Coffee is always necessary. All right, Sonny. Nice. You're going to just smile. And we're going to look at the camera. These are great. <laughs> These are so great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start collecting all of these. Yeah, dude. Awesome. The Pads that says, is this recorded? 100%, dude. Everything that we do, shoot, it goes straight up on the channel afterwards. So you can pretty much go ahead and watch it whenever you want. Oh, my God. Susanna Cruz. Oh, oh, dude. Holy shit. <laughs> oh, shit. Man, we can't even continue the stream. I love it. Susanna says, um, oh, whoa, where did Susanna go? Hold on. My bad. My bad, guys. Susanna says, if I had known about your community, I would have saved so much time and money spent in college. I love y'all's passion. I'm grateful for how much motivation you give me as a developer. Let's get that it. Awesome. That's Thank sick. you, Susanna. Man, I'm just having fun, man. This is exciting. Crazy. Hey, David's in the house. Joseph, David in the house. Let's go. <laughs> Dr. Mern. Uh, <laughs> Joseph goes, I've actually applied your React slash BEM to my older projects and have elevated them to a higher level. Dope, dope. <laughs> man, I love that. I remember when we first started going with BEM. <laughs> Did you read this comment? Uh, yeah, Dr. Mern in the house. Hey. Let's go. All right, guys. Cool. This is like a donation live stream. Yeah, dude. That's exciting. Yeah. Man, I we got to fucking get on Twitch, bro. We got to get on Twitch. Oh, Twitch. Oh, man. Guys, you have no idea what we have in mind for the live streams and upgrading shit. So 
Yeah. It's going to get fun. All right, my hands are itching, Sonny. Let's fucking start building some shit, bro. Let's do it. So let's go back to the previous tab. All right. We... Previous tab. I'm there, bro. All right. So previous tab. And then now we are going to go ahead, go down to the bottom where it says Xcode and Cocoa Pods. Oh. Xcode and Cocoa Pods. Got it? Yeah. So this is where you would have to go ahead and install like Xcode. So just basically the easy way around this is download Xcode, set it up, and you should be good to go, right? The next one is if you go down a little bit lower, so sudo gem install CocoaPod. So you're going to have to do this one. Now, okay. guys, yeah. th this, the reason why there's a lot of setup here is because you set things up once properly, and then you pretty much can build apps and just and, and build that shit across iOS and Android. So it does take a little bit more setup because you're actually building full on apps, right? So you're going to build fully functional apps, which can go on the app store, the Android play store, all that stuff. So you're going to need to set things up once and for all to get that up and running. Mm. Um, okay. So, and you, the chances are there's a lot more sort of like teething issues that you do face with react native. So you just have to have a little bit of patience when it comes to that stuff. But again, it should be all good. And, uh, and, once you guys get used to that. And trust me, the, the trade-off is so small. Like imagine coding an entire app in iOS and then you have to do the same thing in Android. Make sure it's consistent. Like the trade-off is, is, is nothing. When you do React Native, you write code once and it's good to go. So for those of you on Windows that can't do this, use something called Expo. Um, yeah, so I saw some comments coming in. Yeah, Expo, you will not be go, you will not go wrong. You will still build actual apps and you will be fine. And then on the back, keep working on the process to actually install on your computer and get it working. But I wouldn't exactly. like, I wouldn't put the process of installation over your skill of learning React Native. So if it's getting, literally getting in your way, then just go and start learning it using Expo. Yeah. And I would even say like, even if you did set up React Native, like Expo is actually a very good tool. Like it's a very quick tool you can use. You can quickly get started with it. So it, it, there is no harm in using Esco. And um, thank you, Nitish Kumar, for another donation. Appreciate that, dude. Thank you. He right, says, I so, love coding with your videos and never get bored. You guys help me a lot. Okay, dope. Nice. The next step we're going to do is creating a new application. So, um, oh, we're still installing. Yeah, so this, this stuff takes a while for the, the initial installation. But once we've done that, what we're going to do so previously we did something called create react app right create react app used to kind of get that little spinny react icon up and running and everything sort of pretty much started from that point with with this we use mpx react native and then it has a command called init and then you pretty much give uh whatever you want to give it now there are templates right so 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 you can you can use like the the sort of the quick start guide so Kazi, just go on to that tab and scroll a little bit down so they can see what they're they can see what I'm I'm talking about as we do it. Oh, there we go. All right, go yeah. to this tab here. Yeah, so go down uh, no to so the, the tab that you were just on. Oh so previously. And let's go down to uh creating a new app. But let's just go, yeah, there we go. That's good. So you can see the top the top command is the one that we're gonna run once everything's installed. That's gonna pretty much set up our starter point. So that's our starter template, which gets like an app ready. It's gonna go ahead and when we run npm run iOS, it's gonna start up an, an iPhone simulator, get everything running on, on on that app. But you can also use a template, right? So if you if any of you have watched the videos on the channel where we do Redux and things like that, we're using Create React app, but we're using a template and we're using the Redux template. In this case, they show you a demonstration of a, of a TypeScript template um, that you can go ahead and get started with. But in this case, we're pretty much just going to be doing the bare bones. We're not going to be doing TypeScript and stuff today. We're just going to go ahead and show you, um, yeah, start, show you how we get started. But Kazi, once it's installed, all we need to do is run that command, npx react native init, and then we call it a name, whatever we need. All right. There we go. So let's, um... yeah. All right. And what I will do is I will make one for React Native. Command K, by the way, shortcut for wiping. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Somebody said Kotlin is better. No, dude. <laughs> I, <laughs> I highly disagree. <laughs> I mean, um, what do you think about Flutter 
and then Swift and then React Native. How do you think about those three? So, so firstly, Kotlin isn't, isn't bad. I, I, Kotlin is really good. But um, so Flutter, Flutter is actually very promising. Um, it's very promising. It's, it's quite on. It's coming up quite a lot. It's very performant. The only thing is, is it's kind of it has much more like much less fewer sort of like less less support than things like React Native, things that have been out for a lot longer. Um, there are some awesome tutorials out there for Flutter and things like that. But I found running into like specific, when you get into bespoke situations and there's not a lot not a lot of community behind it, you're kind of on your own. So if you get stuck in something completely new territory. Uh, you're you're really in the dirt by yourself, which is why it's very tricky when you start getting into very powerful sort of performant apps. Surface level apps, Flutter is very powerful at the moment, unless you get very, very good at using things like Dart, the Dart programming language. Um, Swift is very powerful. Uh, um, but the benefit, guys, is if you code in React Native, it compiles down to Swift. So you get Swift code. So as in so you pretty much can code in JavaScript. But you, your compiled code ends up becoming Swift, so that's very good. Um, and then the last one you said, what was that? So you had Flutter. Flutter. Swift. So there was Flutter, then there was Swift, and then there was React Native. Yeah. So React Native. Yeah. Like I, I am a big fan of React Native. Reason being, guys, you can code React for web apps, React Native for iOS, Android. You can even use a, a, a different variant of React Native for uh, building desktop Yeah, because you don't have to go to, into a whole new world, right? Like I, I would much rather go from React to React Native than React to Flutter. Yeah, Because exactly. it's a whole new ecosystem. And I was learning Flutter and I was actually having a lot of fun, but it's a whole new ecosystem that I had to pick up. And I'd much rather stay within a similar ecosystem. And then that way I could just keep building on the expertise I have rather than keep unlearning and relearning things. Exactly. And in case of the time that you're putting towards things, like if you put to time towards improving JavaScript, now you're going to get better in React and Electron and React Native and all these other areas. Whereas if you can improve your code in Flutter, you're, you're very limited to just Flutter. Like Dude, in all how the dark, how right? much time did a developer spend to do this? <laughs> Dude, I always wonder. I'm like, some Guy, guy you know, command line is just I know why <laughs> this happens. I this is probably like somebody who was procrastinating from doing actual work on the yeah <laughs> the actual library. <laughs> Firebase have a cool one as well. They have a cool one when they do it. Yeah, yeah, it starts glowing up with Firebase stuff. Okay, it's down so, the template now. Yeah, that one's gonna download the template, get everything set up. Um, it has a so let's explain kind of a breakdown as to like React Native and how it works. So there's a, so many similarities with React Native and React. So if we go back to the first tab while this installs, um, we can actually go ahead and show them some of that code in an Expo, and we can kind of play around with that code. Sure. Um, while we wait. Yeah, I want to cool actually keep example. playing on Expo. That sounds fun. Because I was yeah I was even yeah. doing some of the Flutter stuff. I mean, one thing in knowing about these online IDEs is like there's some stuff that's supposed to work that just stops working for no reason. And that kind of yeah. starts getting really annoying. Yeah, like as in they, they do so many things well and then they're just really shit at some stuff. And the shit, stuff they're bad at, they're just really shit at it. So it makes you not want to use it. Yeah, because you want it to just be consistent and have a similar feel all the time, like when you're coding. You don't want it to be like the same exact thing that you did that got you a result now isn't working and it's their fault on their end. It's frustrating. Exactly. So, okay, exactly. I like that it's... So here's a cool thing I like about Expo. You can actually scan this and then yeah. see it on your on your phone. Yeah, and it's really good for prototyping. Like imagine, guys, you were, you were sort of... You built a quick sort of like... Uh, a demonstration for a client or like somebody like for a job interview. Now imagine you were like, yeah, I built the app. And also why don't you go ahead and test it out on your phone? They'll be like, Oh shit. Like this guy actually went ahead and, and, and built this thing and I can actually play with it. And, and when people can play with something and not just click around, but actually swipe through your app and mess around on it. That's pretty cool. Like that. And, and this is what you can do with Expo. Yeah. Let me hit tap to play. What is this device tap to play? Oh, Theta 45 Finance. Oh, a 20 shit. Pound donation. Would love an example using finance charts in React Native, like candlesticks, etc. 
Yeah. Dope. That's actually, I did, I have done a stock trading app uh, build for a client once in React. I was using, I think it's called D3 for, for number crunching. Damn, that's it's, sick. Yeah, D3, right? Yeah, so I did it for, it was for like a, a, a trading sort of app that he wanted to get like collect loads of stuff in real time. And I paired that with Firebase and it did a bunch of cool shit. Um, but yeah, I mean, we could definitely go ahead and have a look at that. Yeah. All right, here we go. We got Yo. What nice. is happening? Whoa, 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 whoa. There we go. So, oh, it's interesting. It doesn't even need to be a string. Yeah. It's kind of so, no, so that doesn't need to actually be a string, that one, yeah. Because it's actually putting the quotes. I see. Yeah, because, okay. I, oh, it's adding the quotes itself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I understand. Sure. Yeah. So now, um, so the way to think about it is there's slight differences with React Native and React, right? One is there's some core components uh, that you need to think about, and that's like views, scrollable. Um, I think they're called, scroll, I can't remember off the top of my head, but we'll get into it and all that stuff. But there's like uh, safe scrolling zones, so that way you don't hit the, the little notch on special iPhones or Androids and all that stuff. There's, um, but the, the, the main thing is, is you have these different views. So you can see like here, rather than a div, think of a div as a view. That's the only thing you're switching in React, right? So rather than a div, you now have view. Uh, and then you import the view from React Native. And now what that does is on the web, div is just stands for a container, right? So it just stands for a container. Um, but in, the, in, the, in this case, a view goes ahead. And when you open this up on an iOS app, the, the code it compiles down to is, is the native component for a iOS phone. So, like, so whatever a view is on an iOS phone, it's going to pretty much go ahead and compile to that. Whatever it is on an Android phone, it'll compile to that. The same thing applies to text. So on a website, the, your, your text would be a H1, H2, H3, P tag, and things like that. On this, it would just be text. And then you pretty much style it up. Style it as you want. You can change the fonts and things like that. And there are really clean, nice ways that you can go ahead and modify all of this stuff. But we'll get into that afterwards. Um, yeah. But let's quickly see. Dope. Let's see. Dope. Is that, uh, is that installation done? Oh. Yeah, most likely. Wait. Okay, so it says, failed to install CocoaPods, which is required. Okay, so yeah, so try and grab that. So this happened to me as well, actually. Um, CocoaPods are basically the iOS dependencies. So in this case, it's failed to install the iOS part of the app. Uh, it's a bit of a pain in the ass, like sometimes all of this stuff, but it's all good. So now I'm saying missing script is too old, warning. Let's have a look. iPhones. All right. So, Kazi, you want to go ahead and open up Xcode. So, let's go ahead and open up Xcode. And then it might need to actually go ahead and say, okay, so it has installed what we needed. Um, interesting. Okay. So, we already did pod install. So what was that error that came up? So, it said compiler can't create executables. Okay. Just go ahead and, and, and copy that and send it to me on Slack and then I'll, I'll, I'll read that. Um, but in the meantime, what we can do is we can CD out of that after we send that. Nice. So we can CD out of that. And let's just go ahead and actually open up the code so we can start having a look at the code as well. So you want to go ahead and do dot dot to get back from this. So let's open up item dot dot. And then inside the project that they created, you want to do code space. So you know that little sort of trick that we do to go ahead and open up VS Code. So code dot. Yeah. Uh, okay, so you haven't got the, the code command. So no. in that case, open up VS Code. And do command shift P. All and right. then type in um, shell. So S H E L L. Mm -hmm. And then you see where it says install code inside this command from part like from path. Yeah. Just go ahead and, do, and install that. Yeah. So that'll be handy for, for the future. 
But, um, and now what you do is you write code dash insiders and then space inside that directory. Yeah. Okay. Let's see here. And what? Um, so uh, it's, it's a bit hard to see one sec. So I see, get up. So, yeah. So now when you're inside of it, yeah, there we go. Code oh, dash dope. Inside that's it. cool. That's actually pretty cool. Yeah. That's really cool. I love that. And that opens up everything. So it's a very good shortcut when you're coding. Oh, that's um, sick. Because I, I yeah. hate opening things up from VS Code itself. Yeah, because it's just so slow otherwise. But for those of you who are not using the Insiders edition, we're using the beta one, uh, beta version of, it, of VS Code. That's why it says Insiders. But you guys would just have code dot. And you have to do that command shift P shell trick to go ahead and do that. Um, let's go ahead and see what was the issue with that stuff. So the, the problem with most likely with the Xcode pod stuff was that we haven't installed all of the iOS dependencies, mm -hmm. um, which is fine. We can go ahead and do that in a sec. But for now, go ahead and send me a share, a VS live share, and we can pretty much jump into the same code base. All right. Okay, so Dynamite Maddie says, I have no MacBook, so how can I work on this? Use Expo. So you can definitely go ahead and use Expo, and that will um, let you pretty much go ahead and move forward with that. Yeah. Um, okay. All right, here we go. I'm about to open it. I was just logging into GitHub so then I can do this share, read, and write. And then I will get you the link in a second. It's starting the collaboration session. So now, guys, let us know in the comments how many of you guys have done like some kind of app development native iOS, like iOS or Android. So before I did React Native, I actually touched on a lot of Android stuff. Uh, I wasn't using Kotlin, so I was using some other stuff. So just the pure sort of back, you know, old school stuff, but definitely would have gone ahead and had a look at um, uh, a Kotlin if I was doing Android development. But now you don't even have to do that. I would say spend your time, go ahead and do it um, using this. So let's see. So man looks at the iOS is not fully installed. Yeah. So uh, yeah, so the iOS SDK isn't fully installed. That, that's clear. Um, just checking how to do that. So guys, remember all this stuff you don't remember off the top of your head. And, and if somebody says they do, they, they don't because it's, it's one of those things you got to get comfortable with. You'll fix it and then you'll run into the same issue a year later and then you'll fix it again. And then, you know, you got you got just got to get very comfortable with doing that. So were you able to uh, log in or I mean, um, jump into the session that I'm in? in the, yeah. Let me have a, let me get yeah. that. Right. So joining and I need to sign in. Yep. So I'm signing in. Get Got on. it. Authorize. Farzad says I created a startup using Swift UI and Firebase. Super easy to learn and great to reach a MVP. Dope. Nice. That's sick. Awesome. Hey, I'm in. Yo. Okay. Right. Awesome. I see so, you. Now, let's okay. open up a shared terminal. Okay. All right. Give me one second. Here we go. And also, guys, like if you're if you're doing this stuff, I'd recommend you do what me and Kazi are doing and uh, use uh, VS Live Share to go ahead and code with someone else because it's going to help you sort of get past those times where you get stuck and, and stuff isn't playing with you and it's going to get past all that boring stuff, you know? All right, there we go. Awesome. Okay. So now I can see that. So let's, let's go ahead and do this. So now I'm just going to, I know it's going to fail, but this is so previously what we're used to is NPM start. We can do that, but we're going to do NPM run iOS. And it should freak out and tell us that we haven't done something right because that's what we were getting before. Okay, there we go. So unable to find sim sit or could not get the similar list, blah, blah, blah. Okay. This is because did you run pod install? So now we need to go ahead and go back into, let's go CD iOS. 
Now we're inside of iOS and we're going to do pod install. Now in iOS, you have things called pods, just like in JavaScript, you have uh, node modules, right? So in JavaScript, you have node modules in iOS, you have something called pods. Uh, it's pretty much just, you're just pulling in code from somewhere else into your, into your app. So now I can see the error here. So it says unable to look up yep. iPhone, iOS. Okay. So it looks like we don't have the, um, an, a simulator installed, which means we need to open up, um, we need to open up VS uh, Xcode, um, yeah, Xcode again. Oh, by the Let's way, guys, Xcode. I do want to actually mention something really, really cool. This is a side note, but I am super excited about this. Sunny and I are both excited because a lot of you guys want to yeah. actually get in touch with us and speak with us. So we now have a way for you to actually be able to send us a text message directly. And uh, if you guys want access to being able to send us a message directly, just let us know in the chat below and then we'll make sure we'll show it to you guys. But uh, here is one easy way to actually kind of get started on this. Uh, go ahead and send us a text here. Yeah. There you go. Go ahead and so, do that, guys. Let, get in touch with us. Easiest way to get in touch with us. Yeah, text us there. Gary V style. Yeah, seriously, this is awesome. I picked it up from Gary V and I'm psyched. It's the easiest way for me, for Sonny to actually get in touch with the entire community. And I'm just so gassed about this. Like this was not something we had before and now we have it. So I want to take advantage of it. Exactly, 100%. Uh, and it's so cool, guys. It means that it's, it's literally this... The, the easiest, most less friction way that you guys can contact us. Yeah. So, pretty really nice. Okay. <clears throat> Where is the... Uh, you might need to update your IO, your Xcode, because you open up App Store and just That's have a look what at I was what actually version thinking. you had of Xcode. X I was thinking to update my yeah, Xcode. Yeah, it could be... It could be a update. This shit, like installing stuff, is one of the worst fucking things on the planet with coding. It's just never yeah. easy, and it's the it's like a really frustrating thing. Doesn't matter how experienced of a developer you are, and uh, this is why I really like getting started with these online, um, online tools like IDs. like uh, Expo and stuff. And I think why they're becoming so popular. All these uh, online IDs update. There we go. There we go. Yeah. We'll see how long oh. that takes. Well, that's what we actually have to fucking do. So I think. Was we... it? Oh, shit. Is that saying Mavericks or something? Um, <clears throat> Was it saying? I, I need to be on. I need to update my Mac OS. So I think for oh, now, we, right. okay. we should actually. So in use that case, else. dude, we might as well do Expo together. That's what I was thinking. And show yeah. them how. Yeah. I would... Yeah, let's do it. I mean, I've never used Expo, but we can go ahead and learn it together. That'd yeah, be dope. I, I mean, it's probably just easier and it probably works right out the box exactly yeah yeah so I tell you what let's go back to the getting started documentation and then we can actually go ahead and jump into that um the expo route all right i'm gonna go learn the basics um yeah so that link i sent you uh, we have to install the expo cli and things like that wait do you want to but why can't we just use this here, this URL? Because we want to go ahead and make sure we have everything set up first. Um, we because you let's not use this one. This is let's actually install Expo, Expo CLI on, on, on our own computer. Yeah. Okay. That was that's what Atharva was saying actually in uh, in the chat, and I was thinking to go that route. Yeah, because that'd be cool. Yeah, we can do that, and then that way you guys with Windows. And pretty much follow along so smash the thumbs up button if you're a windows user and this is going to help you out okay so this one is actually the link i sent you kazi um so what link? the link you know the getting started link uh -huh. it has everything in that one we clicked last time we clicked the react native cli but let's just click on the expo one inside andy there. says does pwj have mern projects want to join the course uh, yeah, well, I mean, we do have um, projects inside. Yeah, and we actually go ahead and inside the coaching calls, 
we do a ton of different um, builds and things like that live with our students. So it's it's always growing. It's always dynamic. We cover everything inside of the, inside that course. Yeah. Hell yeah, that's the answer, bro. So yeah, and on those live calls, if you have any questions, we do cover anything related to Mern. Yeah. Exactly. You won't um, regret Shrika it, Andy. Said, Just said, jump in. Jump in in that program. You won't regret it. And um, all of those things that you're trying to learn, you'll learn them extremely well. Go ahead, Sonny. Yeah, exactly. Um, so now we're doing... Uh, okay, you've done it, yeah. Install dash G. Um, also, guys, if you didn't know, whenever you do NPM install dash G, it's like installing it to your computer. Dude, so here's, here's... Hold on, Sonny. This is, I actually want to say this. Yeah. We are on the official React Native website, right? Yeah. Bro, look at this. Even they are by default promoting the Expo CLI. Yeah, that's what that's what I was really shocked about. I, I would looking. go with this, bro. I would honestly think that this is the way to go. Yeah, because it, uh, it is like I've never, I hadn't touched it in a while. And then to see that they were pushing it. Um, it, I mean, hundred percent, I wouldn't, I wouldn't resist it. And plus when I was looking at Expo, the website, they had a bunch of additional things like Dude, push notifications. I, I'm going to install the Expo app as well, bro. I'm going to install the Expo app. Do you think the students can, um, yeah. yes, they might be able to do like it to literally so guys, look at every, our app and, or is that like, will that give away some security thing? You know what I'm saying? Um, I think we'll be good. It should be good. Okay. Uh, so guys, go ahead and download Expo on your phone. So I'm actually going to install it as well now. So Expo on the App Store, and let's see. Let's just go ahead and install that. I just I just downloaded yeah. Expo. This should be the, the Expo app. client. Expo client. Yeah. And then yeah, they can use the QR code. I think yeah. So that's what Shrik is saying as well. So everyone can pretty much go ahead and try it out. That would be dope, man. Can you imagine that? We build an app and you guys can just play around with it using the expo. People are messaging us on the chat. That's pretty cool. We got Joseph Chu is there. Atharva is there. Steven, Derek Johnson. That is super cool. I'm going to give All you right. access to this too, Sonny, so you can communicate with everybody. This is dope. 50%. That'd be dope. <clears throat> okay. So we have expo client. Um, All right. I'm okay, so excited, now, bro. Look at how easy... Done. Look at how easy this is going to be. I know. Crazy. I got the... Cool. So I'm going to Dude, just... what I really like about this is that I think it's going to be running on their um, sort of cloud, you know, like their the sort of their yeah. devices. Yep. Um, I mean, I'm not sure, but if they are, then I think oh so. my God, that's game changer because React Native, it, the debugging in React Native is so slow because you're running simulators all the time. So... If you can do it on Expo and they're doing it and they take that slow lagging, like annoyance. That's out one of your cool way. thing about Flutter. Debugging is really fast. The hot reload is pretty epic with Flutter. Yeah. So they they improved it a lot with uh, with React Native. But even after I did it today, I was like, I, I remembered the frustration. And coding in React compared to React Native, the speed is just insanely different. React Native has got a lot of you get so much more teething issues. Once you get into a rhythm, you're good, but the initial setup is a lot more painful. Yep. Um, Yo, you know. we got to do this every day, bro. We got to fucking, even, even if we don't do lives every day, we should just get together for 15 minutes and shoot a video on just one thing. Like even the questions people are asking, yeah. which laptop is the best, like something, bro. So it's a habit yeah, just, for us to do something because this is this is a game changer. Yeah, literally one session back, and I can already feel the energy from everyone watching. Almost a thousand likes already, guys. It's too fucking that's insane, good, bro. Uh, when shit's insane. good, shit's good, man. Like that's yeah, that's how I put it. So let's try this expo init um, first React Native. All right, let's try it. Yeah. I just have a feeling it's going to work. And if it does, yeah. I'm not going to the other fucking way of doing it, bro. I I just believe in <laughs> I'm down with that. I hate the other way of doing it. I it's, just I, it's over. A minimal app as clean as an empty canvas. Uh TypeScript minimal but just the essentials to get you started. Do you want to go with uh 
the oh shit. Okay. So so no TypeScript. Um, Blank or minimal. Bare and minimal or essentials. A minimal app is just. Or just blank. Uh, it's a bit hard to see one. Alright, bro. I'm going it. blank, bro. You took too long yeah, to fucking blank. decide. All right. Did you do bare workflow or managed workflow? I said uh, the managed work, the the first one. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say let's go. Whatever they gave us by default. Yeah. Oh, I'm excited. Oh, another one, dude. Damn. Oh, we Thanks should have another so one. Antonio Cortez. Do you want to go ahead and pull that on the screen? Um, I can't. It's not showing up for me yet. Uh, oh, shit. Yo, we um, just hit 10,000 playbacks, you guys. Let's go. Yeah. Dude, that's what I miss, man. I remember that was like a milestone every video. It's like yeah. we hit 10,000, 20,000, 30,000. Got to celebrate along the way, man. All right. Hold yeah, on. Yeah, man. Let's see this. Oh, That's thank it. you, Antonio Cortez. That is sick. Yeah. He goes. He says, go for it. You guys have changed my life. Thank you, Sonny and Nas. What the fuck? Where's Nas? <laughs> <laughs> and now I know for a fact that I can learn how to code. And it's all because of Grandpa Python, a.k.a. Kazi, LOL. Damn, bro, this guy is all over the place with the people he's mentioning. But I love it. Thank you, Antonio. <laughs> Appreciate it. I love that. <laughs> All right, here we go with another um, photo. I'm going to take a screenshot. Get ready, Sonny. Smile for the camera. Hey, let's go. <laughs> All right. Hey, you sound like that. You know, what's his name? The guy that was on Gary V's last story where he's like, All right, all right, all right. Oh, yeah, Matthew McConaughey. I love that guy. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. All right, all right. Nice. All right, here we go. So we are installed. Okay. So we've done that now. And now and we just CD it, and start, bro. Do it, dude. Let's see. I'm, I'm actually excited to see what this shit does. Let's go. All right. CD, awesome. CD, uh, react. Oh, fuck my life. What did I call it? Yeah, it was uh first. Yeah. All right. And then NPM start. So we can do NPM start or expo start. I think I'm gonna do NPM start because it's in line with the whole it's, yeah. React app. So thank you so much as well. Sam codes five dollar Canadian donation. Bro, this is what we've all been waiting for. Just passing oh, my six. Nice notes. and Sam codes. Yeah, yeah, go keep going, keep going. My bad. My bad. Keep going. And he says, Oh, and yes, Expo does have hot reloading too. Mm -hmm. Amazing. That got me excited. Bro, hold on. Um, Is any of this like... I mean, we don't care, right? We can just make a fucking new account. I don't care. It's not like we have our credit card information in here. No, no, no. It should be fine, dude. Honestly, it should be fine. All right. So, LAN. I can create a tunnel as well, right? And on that tunnel, everybody should be able to check out the app. Yes. Bro! Um, oh, no, but you don't need to. Dude, you don't need to. Dude, Look at that, that QR code. That's sick. But I mean, they can't see the QR code. QR code. Wait, no, but I can see it right now. Yeah, but you can't scan it, can you? Yeah, dude. I can pull out my phone on the Expo client. Are you serious? Let me try it right oh, now. Oh, shit, works, son. Right now. Let's go ahead and see this. What the fuck? Oh, I just got to hover over it. It fucking makes it big. I need to create an account for Expo. We'll do that in a sec. Um, I've gone ahead and created one as well. So I'm going to create an I account on Expo as well, bro. Um, what I need is a USB. Oh, hold on one second. Sign up for Expo. Okay. Let me go ahead and create an account quickly. Those are people saying you can sign it. Use tunnel guys. This is nice. We're on the app. Hope it doesn't lag. I think it's running on local. Yeah. So I think it would run on local guys and then it tunnels it through. So you can pretty much use everything uh, as we do it. So that's pretty much how we would use Ngrok as well. So Ngrok is the alternative that we pretty much use when we do. Um, yo, what's up, Aaron? He said, hey. yo, what's up? <laughs> yo, you can plug it in here too, I think. Nice. And um, I'm going to... Yep. <laughs> All right, bro. Thank you. Um, okay. Go. I just want to see if I can set up a screen where I can um, 
show my phone. So Paul okay. has um, iPhone. And um, would you like to? I want to try something. If I scan it just by, let's go ahead and try something. Okay, open in Expo, open in Expo, opening project. Oh yeah, you would want it on tunnel, as you're right. No. Yeah. Yeah, but you'd I, want it on tunnel. Okay. And did you did the scan work for you? So change it to tunnel. I I did I did, tunnel ready. Oh, it's on tunnel. Yeah, so guys, if you don't know how to scan this, literally just pull out your camera app, and uh, and and then do it, and then it'll work. Um, it says new update available, building JavaScript bundle. Dude, this is pretty insane, man. Like, I, it, holy shit! Because when I when I used to use React Native, this stuff wasn't out. Like, yeah. is it is it working, or is it about to yes, work? Yes, it's building it's building a JavaScript bundle. Yeah, it's five percent. It's it's doing some stuff right now, but we'll see how that works out. Okay. Okay. So um, press A. For Dude, I'm actually five. getting so excited. I know, man. Oh, I see. So, dude, when you've got the... the um, Apparently, I was making projects with it, bro, a while ago. On I have the Expo app, everything. I'm like, lo I have an account. I, like, was making projects. Really? So, yeah, yeah, freaking crazy shit. Nice. Um, how do I go on my app and scan it? I don't even know where to go. So, there's a few ways you can work on it, right? Um, okay, what is right this? Right now, this is a debugger, but if... How did this open? That's like, I think you must have hit a debug option or something. But if you click on, go back to your terminal. Pretty sure I didn't do anything. What is happening? Where yeah, so React Native has a lot of things behind the scenes. So it will, it will have a bundler, which is always running, right? So whenever, you're, whenever you make a change, it rebundles your app and it sort of serves it, right? Yeah. So now if we open up your, um, okay, so I'm just going to show it. I wonder why my iPhone isn't showing as a resource on Ecamm. Oh, shit, I've got it working on my, on my local. Dovakin yeah. says, is this the beginning of a React Native series? Hell yeah. Are you what are you trying to run it on right now, Kazi? What? So we'll we'll maybe go ahead and get them to connect to it afterwards, because that'll take a while. But on your one now, if you go ahead and um you should have a terminal that's open right now, right? Uh terminal that's open right now? Okay. You should have a terminal that's open right now. And what you want to do on that terminal uh -huh. is what, what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to develop it on a web, like a web browser, but it's building all of it for iOS and Android. So I'll show you what I mean by that. So on that, so go to that, that uh, terminal that you're on. Uh-huh. Yep. Um, so that one. And then t press, so you either press I for iOS uh, A for Android or W for uh, web browsers. Press W. All right. Attempting to open the browser in a web browser. So, all right. So and now I'll open the project. And what we can do now is this gives us a really nice benefit because now we can code it with the speed oh, of a web browser. Shit. That's sick, see what bro. I mean? Yeah, because now you can code it with all of the speed of a web browser, but you have the, it will compile to an iOS and Android app. Oh man, which is that sick. is nice. Yeah. This is actually, dude, like I, I, I had no idea about this, to be honest. Like, that's insane. That's, that's actually game changer shit. Nice. All right. Okay. Open up app JS to start working on your app. Interesting. Yep. So now if you go into your code, so. Let's go into our, just uh, send me a uh, live share request afterwards for that one. Yeah, yep. First React Native 
code insiders. What the? What? Where the? Where and guys, if you're enjoying this right now, hit the thumbs up button and get this video out to as many people as you can. Oh, it was weird. It was an auto completing. But I used that trick, bro. I used that trick hey, and it worked. It's good, right? It's freaking amazing. Oh my God, that hot reload. I didn't, dude, this is, that's game changer. That's actually so good because it takes so long running it on the simulator. So now the fact you can build it on a web browser and still have, oh my God. So just, <laughs> it's insane. Uh, developer gasm. It is developer gasm, dude. Devgasm.com. Dude, that actually would be a great <laughs> website. <laughs> Tin dev, devgasm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All the shirts. Let's have them. Exactly. Right. <clears throat> so let's go to now. Yeah, so app.js. So now if you change something, it's hot reloading <clears throat> by default. So if you type in like open up one, two, three app.js, you should see a hot reload on the right. <clears throat> All right. So let's go sunny. Yeah. Save. There we go. Nice. Dope. Oh, there we go. Oh, also, dude, look, I've got your app tunneled. Oh, shit. Are you serious? Yeah. So, look, so make a change, look, and you should see it right now in real time. Oh. And yes, this one is cracked, guys. Hold on. I'm going to full screen your phone. So, I'm going to change it from sunny to YouTube with a fire emoji and i'm gonna hit hold on fire emoji why is my fucking emoji all right whatever i'm just gonna hit save oh that's insane that is insane let's go save oh yes. that yo, is so dope yo people are saying it works oh, for man. them yeah because everyone <laughs> went ahead and scanned the, the code oh. that did oh my god <laughs> Yeah. Yo, that is awesome. <laughs> How do I do it, bro? I want to do it. Huh? I want to do it. So How do I do it? Go to, go to your, um, uh, where is it? How do you get, does anyone know how you get that code back? Um, okay, go to, how do we get that code? List of available commands, open. Expo. Now I got the fire emoji in there. Nice. All right. So now what I'm going to do, this is so cool knowing that I'm on your guys' freaking computers right now, in your, in your phones right now. It's sick. Crazy, man. Um. All right. I'm going to go and learn the basics while Sunny figures that out. Okay. Anyone knows, by the way, just drop it in the in the comment section. All right. So, hello world, Justify Center. Okay. I'm just flying through the tutorial so I can do some fun shit, bro. I'm going through the yeah. tutorial like how I would go through it. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna drop this and let's see what happens. So you can go to. Oh shit, I fucked it up. All right, we're back, baby. If we are back. It is running at your local, it should be running at your local host, port 19002. Um, I have no idea what that means, bro. What, what so go to localhost colon um so so open up a tab go to uh -huh. localhost colon get out of the uh, debugger yeah so it could be any yes localhost um 19002 ah okay and then you should get back to there you go but so, how do i oh i just go open up the camera on my phone yeah, so, dude, you don't even have to do anything. Literally, oh, open up the shit. camera and You're it'll right. say open the next. Oh. 
you're right. All I had to do was just open up the camera on my phone and just look at it. Yeah. If you ever lose that and you don't remember the, um, uh, how to get back, you just do cancel it and do NPM start and it will go ahead and build it and take you to this page by default. Save. Yeah. It, oh, and you've, dude, you've also got clickable things on the left. Look where it says, um, run in web browser, run in iOS. Can you see that? I'm just going to leave Send this link open. With email. I'm just going to leave this open here. So anybody that wants to, um, do it, they can just make sure, make sure it was a tunnel mode, dude. But why does it keep forcing me to go to the debugger? Like, I don't care about going to no, the debugger. So the, de the debugger is, uh, so now if you was to, uh, inspect the debugger, you would see all the console logs from the app. And the reason why the debugger is running is because we've got it running on the, on, on, um, Oh, there we go. Yeah. All right. So anybody, if you just open up your camera and point to it on iPhone, it will bring you here. I don't know if an Android does it or not. People are like, yeah, it's working. James Gale. Dude, that's so cool, bro. This is honestly even easier than like anything. This yeah. is so cool. And, like, and now you guys can go ahead and play with that as we code, which is so dope. Like they can actually play around with the app as we build it. On their phones, dude. Yeah. <laughs> that did you is send a, a live chip with it? Oh, yeah, you did, right? Oh, shake your phone to reload. Dude, this is going to be a whole nother level of like, interactive coding with yes them. this is another level of interactive coding bro like actually being able to see the app on your phone as you're with us that is insane bro i just typed in papa react made this change oh my god that is fucking sick holy shit showed up on your computer oh and I nine oh oh six shows you the actual app what was that the nine nineteen oh oh six shows you the actual app. Uh, nineteen oh oh two. No, nineteen then, nineteen oh oh six shows oh, you right. the actual fucking yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's that, that's the actual web app, right? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Nice, bro. Oh, now, oh my god, now share your um share your local host with me. You're 1902 and 1906. Um, how do I, what do you mean? So on VS Code Live Share, if you share 1906 with me, now I get your win, your web. How do I do that? So share server. So go to share server. Uh-huh. Uh, oh, yeah, shit. Are you in. serious? Yeah, 1906. And then, yep. Oh. Snap, son. And now I can see. Yeah. Holy oh, shit, I can see it now. I'll give you 1901 <laughs> as well. You have all of them. Yeah. That is so sick, man. Damn, we just figured out boy. how to do live coding with, uh, with yeah. React Native in a, in a way that they can even go ahead and play with the app. People are saying use LAN instead. Tunnel is slow. No, LAN is for local guys. That means that you guys can't connect. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. So we want it so that you guys can go ahead and, and connect as well. Um, okay. <clears throat> and also, if you don't have the app, then it will go ahead and download uh, Expo for you. Dude, Expo's game changer. Damn, I'm happy. I'm really happy it kind of like did and install React yes, Native by default yes, in the yes, beginning. Yes, yes, I'm super happy. As soon as stuff starts like bugging out, I'm like, fuck it. I'm finding a different way to go about this. That's like my yeah, least luckily, favorite though, thing. Because back in the day, dude, this it wasn't available like that, you know? So it's, only, it's more of a new thing now that we can get to this. But Dude, this is why awesome, years though. ago I discovered Expo. Like as soon as I run into any kind of difficulty on just installing i go crazy with fucking researching like there's always some kind of tools that are there to make your lives easier yeah. there is now yeah. it's so popular that react native has put it on their front page years ago when i found it like nobody cared about it yeah exactly right so now we have the app on the left and we got our app on the right dope now i'm in as well okay now let's run through some of the, the 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 sort of like layout of the code, right? And we can kind of like 
you know, mess around with it a bit. So I just want to check header. I don't even know the default imports, but we'll figure it out together. Yeah, I'm just doing random shit. Okay, give me one second. I'm going to just paste this and see what happens if everything breaks or not. Oh, shit. I did it, bro. New app. Oh, nice. Um, Flexbox. Oh, no. You need, oh, you didn't wait. Yeah, nice. You actually got a shit. Wait, the hot reload doesn't work on your phone, so you got to, like, shake your phone and do reload, which is... Wait, I actually, I don't know. Maybe my oh. internet is bad or something. Because it's not showing up on my... Are you shaking your phone? Yeah, I, sh I shook it, and it says opening project. Yeah. This might just be lagging a bit. Um, That's very possible. Dude, I got squares yeah, we, on squares, bro. When we're, nice. When we're live, um, might be the quickest way to get um, you running it on LAN, connecting your phone, and then you know how you share your screen on the phone? So you, so that way, if you ever wanted to show what it looks like on a phone, I'm trying you can do to that. do that, but, but also, for dude, some reason, my phone isn't being pulled up as a screen. I was trying to do that for a while. If you open up that terminal, so open up the, um, I don't know if, you, if your iOS emulator is going to be able to run actually because you haven't got the um, the latest dev tools, but open up that term, uh, the one that's running everything and let's go to, which so one what was it? it? I? I for iOS? Yeah, I'm it'll just be I for, for iOS. iOS. Okay. Yeah, and then that should try and, yeah, there we go. No, iOS simulator this, should work. It should work, but I mean... Ooh, yeah, I, iPhone 11 Pro Max. Let's fucking go. It crashed. Let's fucking go. <laughs> oh, that is exciting. That is exciting. All right, give me one yeah. second, dude. I got to use the restroom. I've been drinking too much water. So... <laughs> Go for it. Guys, let us know in the comments right now if you're if you've used Expo before. Um so uh, yeah, so loads of people are saying too many people are connecting. If most likely, yeah, if we're if we're tunneling it, it could be slowing things down. Um but let's just have a look. So we see how really is working fine without the shaking. Um it does, guys, but it might slow down when, when you start to get into into um sharing it across different guys. Um, which type of man can be higher skill they will have for level? So anyway, which which is cheaper to use as a solo dev, Firebase or MongoDB Atlas? Mm. Okay, so if you're a solo developer, uh, it depends what kind of project you're doing. If you're doing like a freelancing gig, I would tend to go with Firebase. Firebase is sort of the one that like you can pretty much scale up very quickly with. Long term build and things like that, I would maybe recommend going ahead and looking at. Uh, MongoDB. We've got plenty of Mernstack builds, by the way. So a lot of the builds on this channel will go ahead and teach you how to get an app up and running with um, Firebase, and then you can pretty much convert the entire app over to MongoDB. So that's a good way of doing things, actually. So that's, that's a really sort of secure way of doing it. And we still have 500 people watching, guys. Insane. Guys, I think we're about to break 1,000 likes. If I'm looking at that number, it's currently at 930. Can we break 1,000 likes? It's going to be insane. If you Do you guys enjoy me and Kazi coming back together live? Because it's been fun. Um, we've definitely just made a few breakthroughs already um, with the very short amount of time that we're, we're, that we're here. Uh, yeah, and guys, the Super Chat is just, oh my God, it's insane. Um, right, so with that said, let's check some things. So we've got the view right here. Dope. And now, look, the app is actually up and running on my phone, so you guys should be able to see that right now. But the app is over there, and it's actually running, so... So actually got everything up and running over there. And what we're going to do is, can you see? So I want to show you guys something, right? So you see right now on iPhones, right? So on iPhones and things like that, you see at the top, you've got this little notch. And yes, my phone is cracked <laughs> for everyone that's done it before. 
But um, I can't actually change the view right now because Kazi's away. But what we're going to say is if you guys can focus over here. So you see this little safe area. Yeah, we call it a safe area. Now, the reason, uh, the reason why we call it a safe area is because you need to be able to see in that area, right? So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and type in React Native Safe Area. And I'm going to uh, change that code so that it accommodates for the safe area, okay? And the way we're going to do that is I'm going to go here and import it at the top. So we're going to say import from React Native Safe Area. So you can see I'm actually changing the code right now. Um, you guys should be able to see that still. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and then to the view, rather than a view, I'm going to just change this to a safe area view. Save it. And now we should see the app still works, right? The app still looks completely the same. But there we go. Look at that. So now on the phone, if you guys can see now, they see that little gap, right? We just changed the line of code with the safe area view. And now you see that right there. Like it doesn't, it, it no longer crops that area. So we call that the safe area. So you, sometimes you want to go into that safe area. Sometimes you don't want to go into the safe area. Uh, in this case, imagine you had a menu. You don't want that to like feed into the safe area, right? You don't, you don't want that behavior because it doesn't look the best. It's not going to be, be the um, best experience, right? Um, so with that done, now what we're going to do is maybe mess around with a few other things. So let's go ahead and imagine we had, um, let's just create a very simple app. Oh, also I saw this is a class-based component. I don't want this. Um, instead of this, I'm going to go ahead and just do a, let's go ahead and refactor this to be a, um, let's go ahead and say const. Let's just call it app equals boom. This is a class-based component. And then here I'm going to say export default app. And we're going to export it. And then here we don't have render inside of a class-based component. Save it. And this should still be working if we've done everything right. So there we go. Everything still looks pretty good. If, I'm, if I didn't break everything, yeah, there we go. It's all pretty good. Everything is working in the way that we wanted. Um, so those are people saying it's working. Sunny can use React Native for Android apps or is it only for iOS? Good question, Stephen. So... Uh, the reason why you want to be using React Native, guys, is because the beauty is you write one code base and it compiles to iOS and Android. So you don't actually have to write two separate code bases. Um, so that's the whole reason we actually use it. What's so up, baby? Yo, what's up? All right. So <clears throat> what's going on here, man? What's this? Um, what's this? So, that are playing? so I refactored the code to a uh, it was a class based component before. So I made it functional. Also, what I did was I went ahead and you see I added this safe area view instead of a default view. The reason why is because if you go ahead and open up, uh, so let's go in the simulator now and um, let's actually open up the app. So inside of, uh, we should be able to see it on the homepage now. Can we Good. see export now? Uh, maybe just hit uh, I again on the terminal. How fucking real did they make it, bro? Do we have to go to the app store and download it? <laughs> it, we should Rejection. just go ahead and like fling it over. So again, this is this is most likely, I think, because of the um. My guess is going to be because of uh, Expo. The oh, yeah, no, the oh, the um operating system thing. Stuff, because we've got an async function without a catch block and things like. Go up to the top. Let's have a look at the top. What top? What top? Uh, so you're you you're cutting off an error right now with your. There we go. She so says it says task queues go up up again. So trial process error. Uh, yeah. So the X E runs some of this. Yeah, device. probably. Yeah. Just, yeah. Cool. So that's definitely because of that, most likely. So um, you should be able to see now because it's running a bit slow, dude. So if you want to go ahead and do instead of tunneling it, do it on your LAN, and then can you share your phone view? No, I can't. That's what I was trying to tell you earlier. Like for some reason, it's not allowing me to share my phone view. Oh shit. All right, okay, so we still have, okay, cool. So I was showing them before that, you know, like, can you see my phone now? So you see, like, on the top, right, it uh -huh. says, it has, like, it goes into this boundary. So this is what we call the safe zone boundary. See that? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So 
what you want to do is in your code, you see that we've got this safe area view container, uh -huh. right? Yeah. And what this does is it stops it from going into that dangerous boundary. Oh shit, let me actually. So it will, it will pad the top and bottom of the app. Yeah. Right, so we actually go ahead and pad the top and bottom of the app. So now, I don't know how we're gonna, where we can show that in an easier way though. Because my, my expo isn't actually pulling up in time. A bit slow. Mm. Oh shit, Aaron says, "Bro, you a beast." <laughs> um. Okay. So, attempting to open a project. Okay, so we'll we'll just, we'll just carry on from this then. So we've got the view. Let's go ahead and refactor this. So let's get rid of this. And can you see how how has he added this before? Where it's got style, width, height. Background yep. color blue, right? So here, let's go ahead and just make it very obvious. So background color red. So we should see just a red square now. Now this is kind of how we style things inside of React Native, right? Now there is a way of doing this. I'm going to quickly find the snippet for that. Um, so I'm going to check the docs, and I'm just going through the React Native docs. I'm just trying to find the styling section. So I think it's design, style. And then what we have is something like this, right? So underneath our code, this is typically how you would do it. You would have something like this where you have a style sheet, right? So I'm not gonna kind of, um, ex we'll explain this bit in a second, but what we can do now is where you've got the style here, <clears throat> you can pretty much just go ahead and say something like styles dot, and then for this first view, imagine we just called this one the, um, Let's just call it first label. And this is going to be, and it's a view. La sorry, so label as ahead. an L-A-B-E-L, right? <laughs> and then, boom, get rid of this. Okay. And then let's go ahead. And, and so now we've got a view inside of a safe view. And we're going to have text. And this text is just going to say, hello, world. So like this, hello, world. And then... We're going to delete a lot of this. We're going to keep one reference so we know how to write stuff. And then we're going to say something like this. So we're going to say first label. And this is the view. And then guys, imagine CSS, but camel case. So all the properties now, rather than, so imagine you had like background color. And background color usually is like this, right? Yeah. But when you do it in this fashion, it's like that. You, do, you just camel case instead, right? So in this case, we could do something like background color red. And let's just save this and we'll see if it works. So now... We go ahead, save it. Let's see if we can, we can't, okay, so it's stylesheet.create is not a function. That's because we haven't imported stylesheet from React Native. So we need to go to the top, import that, save it, and then we should, um, we should get past that error. Let's see what happens now. Uh, and so it says fail to construct text. Okay, because we didn't import text as well. So import text. And you will get really quick with this sort of stuff. Like, remember, even when we do the React, so there we go. So now we have, like, Hello World has popped up on our screen. So, because if you got this open on your localhost, on your... Yeah. Um, right. So let's get this. What is this first label thing? Says, oh. So this is just the view itself. But, I mean, the actual... I guess the, the, the actual thing it should be here, right? It should be more, like... So let's, let's kind of actually give this a bit more context. So let's just say, like, a to-do... Right. So let's just imagine that the first view was like a to do. Right. So imagine this was called style. Let's just call this a to do. Um, actually, no, dude, let's do this properly. Right. So this is just a demo. Right. So we're just showing you how to pull in styles. And previously, if you watched any of our other builds, we would have like another file which would have the CSS inside of it. Right. So yeah. no, what we... you can have, and I've seen people do it before, is, is people have something like, App dot style. Oh, it's right here. Okay, okay, okay. I was like, what the fuck is it? But okay, I understand now. First label, first label. Ah, this is where it's pulling its styling from. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah, that's exactly. Yeah. Oh, so I see. What you can tend to do now is actually have something called um so so let's go ahead and do command B to open up the sidebar. Hold on. I just want to learn how to change the font size to like uh, equivalent of an H1. Yeah. Oh, nice. Is it just text space that's H? So now you just do font size with a camel case. 
Uh, hold up, let me see what the fuck is happening. Oh, you didn't write it. Hold on one second. Let's save. Let's see what happens. Did that work? No, right? Uh, I didn't. I didn't add it. Um, no, I I added H one oh, right did. here. Okay, let me remove that. Okay, so what's the right way to? Is there a better way to do it? Because I don't think that worked. Uh, I'm just curious because I'm just seeing what they might actually accept a few things which might make it easier. Um, you can have nested text, you can have normal text, but the way that I would do it normally is have it as this. So you see here, you just camel. So typically in CSS, you would do it like this font size, right? But in whenever you're doing this stuff, you just do it like this, you do font size. Oh. And then here we would do something like six, 15 or 16 or something. And then let's go ahead and do that. Save. And now this should, um, I think we might have to do it as 16 pixels. Maybe let's go ahead and see if that that reloads. Let me see that does it quicker. Um, let's make it huge. Hold on, let me do. Oh, this. so I think it's actually just. I think it's just a number actually. Can I do title oh, so text like that or no? Oh no 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 no! Um, I see. I see what's happening. Okay. okay. No no, that's good. You, you done it right? Yeah, you do it. Right. But so here, if we do something like thirty, so first label. Oh, dude, because we're we're adding the first label. Sorry, this is right. Yeah. yeah so the style shouldn't be here. That should. It should be on the text. Oh, so we've got first label and then now. All right. What we, we should, should actually it. do is we should call it title text, title text, and that should be better. There we go. So now cool. it should be, sorry, there we go. So, and now if you change this, like, yeah, so, and, and there's a few things to notice, right? One is the naming. So the font, this bit changed. And also now we don't say pixels. I mean, we just say 30, right? I think you can still use pixels if you're passing quotes. Um, but, but the reason being for these changes is because now we write the code this one way and it will then go ahead and change it for whatever iOS supports and whatever Android supports. Okay. Um, we don't have, um, okay. Oh, nice. Jason Francis says no pixel in size and font weight both. Yeah. Dope. That's awesome. Yeah. So you don't have any pixels. I remember there are slight changes like this, but yeah, it, 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 it's really awesome. Once you get faster at this, it really clears it up. Um, okay. Oh, you haven't got your rocket started. Um, I do, but for some reason, it just keeps uh, not working in the VS Code, but now it's working. Okay, okay, cool. All right, there we go. Right, so what we're going to do now is we're actually going to show you how easy it is to make a component inside of React Native, right? So let's go ahead and create a new um, a new file, Kazi, called todo.js. All right, let's go and do that. Hey, we just got a two-pound donation. Thank you, brother. He goes, no PX in size and font, weight, bold. Nice. Handy little tip there for everyone. All right, what were you saying, Sonny? So let's create a file um, called todo.js. So we're going to create a component which is going to represent a to-do. Do you want it to right? be in a folder or just here? Um, so, we, I mean, this, we Capit can create a folder. And capitalized because... Yeah, so because it's a component, it'll be capitalized. So todo.js. Dude, apparently VS Code has some kind of native thing with to-do. You see that tick mark show up? Yeah, I saw that, yeah. Let me Crazy. Um, thing one, thing two. Maybe if you do like, uh, oh look, you've got that little inspect button at the top right. right you see I'm that? just no? gonna, I'm just gonna delete it, bro. It's it's gone. To do that, JS. Yeah, so to do .js, well, capital T, capital T cool. for components. Got it. Yep. So now we have to do .js, and then we're going to do our lovely little RFC trick, which is still supported inside of um, React Native. So you see it's just essentially, oh, we're going to make an arrow function. So we're going to do const to do, make it very simple. 
And then here, so you see, Yo, it made it's a div. Up, it's showing up on my phone, bro. It looks so juicy. Nice. Let's build a so React here, Native app. We need to change this one because the snippet here is for a div. So I think there may be an R. If, if everyone knows the actual snippet for React Native, I think there is one for that. Um, I think it's RF React Native, RFN, CE, maybe. Let's go ahead and know. RF, R, React Native, F. Functional R N F C E. Uh, uh, sorry, sorry. R N F C E. Apparently. Hey, there we go. That one. Nice. So it's R N F E S. You got with styles. Oh shit! Nice. What? With styles as well. Oh. Oh, is is, is this oh, R N F C? Nice. Holy shit! You got a big donation. What the? What's a big donation? How much um, is that, dude? I think Damn. it's, I mean, I I think it's 10, 10, over 10 bucks, almost 15 bucks. Thank you so much. Avinasha says, have you been following? Wait, have been. I have been following your content since I met you, Kazi, at VidCon last year. What the hell? Where we talked about being That's a coder good. and traveling the world. Oh, I know this boy. Even though I've been coding for 10 years, I learned a lot from these bills. Keep teaching folks to code and make money. That is fucking awesome. I uh, met... I met him in real life and him and his wife actually um, travel and they make vlogs. They, they were making like food vlogs at the time that were actually killing and blowing up. And he was talking about how he's traveling around the world, freelancing, making an income uh, and traveling with his wife. That's dope, man. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you for the it's donation. It's always cool to see people you've connected with before and they're still watching. Oh, dude, super cool. This is crazy. I love it. All right. So now we have the to-do, right? So we have the to-do here. Uh, and then imagine like in here, so I'm just going to say, I am a to-do. Okay, save it. And then we're going to go back into app. There we go. Now I'm uh, fucking hype, bro. Check this out, okay? These guys aren't yeah. ready for this. Here we go. All right. Now we're going to switch here. Boom, son. Hey, that's it. That's what we're talking about. That's on your phone right now. Yeah, buddy. Dude, what I was going to show you is you see on your phone. Um, oh, nice. It's actually, a, it's cropping at the top though, Kazi. Hold on, man. Hold on, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, on man. Hold on, man. I'll fucking fix it. <laughs> um, damn, it's actually kind of tricky to, like, we'll be able to see it once we go down on the app or maybe add some lines at the top wait hold on should i hit uh where's the actual app can we do backslash n does that do what we want it to do uh i don't think so oh <clears throat> how do we add new lines will that work mm, i think it's how do you no it's not Hold on. Add this, new lines. This React Native. This is how I do right. all my coding. How do I insert a line break? It's okay. Yeah. So you can do an interpolation on it. So you do this thing. Oh, you can. Yeah. You can also do. Uh, but I mean, we shouldn't really do that. Yeah. Right yeah, now. yeah. 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 Interpol. Hold on. Wait, you don't want to put a new line? No, because we let's just get it so that we can maybe. I mean, I think maybe show it as a full screen, as a second scene or something, and then we just go back and forth from it. So we have it looking, we have it like this, and then when we want to show it on the phone, we just go to a third scene and show it on the phone. Okay. So phone by as itself with, or something? Without, yeah, just by itself, you know, because then I think that would work. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, awesome. Okay. Cool. So you, you see on our code, right? We have this safe area view. If I go ahead and comment this out, notice how when I hit save now, it's going to jump up to the top, I think. So it's going to always freaking out. It's saying safe area view. It's because <clears throat> I have to get rid of that, actually. So let's go ahead and save that. And then now if we do it, it's going to go. So now, Kazi, look in that phone view. Um doesn't look good on the phone view. If 
Right, so Kazi, you've got a um, Give me iPhone a... XS Max, right? Or iPhone Pro. Yeah, I got a yeah. iPhone 11 so you Max show, Pro. Do you want to show your phone to the screen right now and show them without the safe area view? Show them I will. how it's cropping into that notch. All right, I will. Give me one second. Let me switch this scene to the iPhone scene. And uh, now let me try it. Yeah. You see that? So it's actually cropping into the notch at the top. I think that's kind of hard for them to see. I'll actually show them like this. Yeah, so, so show, show them, them your phone, yeah. Look at this. Yeah, so you guys can see like it's going into that. We call that the safe area, right? Well, and it should not be in the safe area, right? So to prevent that, the only thing we want in that safe area is sometimes you've got like a header and the color kind of goes out into that into that thing, but we don't want it. We don't want that to be the case. And I, I see people saying margin top. You can do margins and things like that, but the the goal here is they built a component for this. And the reason and the thing about this component is it only adds that padding if the phone that it's running on has the that that sort of complication where it has the notch, right? Because some Galaxy uh, Android phones have a, a they call like the non-safe area and things like that. Now imagine if you had to custom code it for all of those things, then you're going to get into some headache, right? You're going to have to like account for the different, like it might work for an iPhone Pro, but it might not work for other ones. So if you go ahead and add that, then it fixes that problem. So that does it for that. Now we created a to-do component. So let's go back to the, the screen so we can see the code. Go back to the screen. Oh shit. Yeah. Good point. All right, I was yeah. like, I thought we were showing the screen. Cool. And then now what we're going to do is we're going to say import. And we're going to import the to-do app, the to-do component, sorry, from our to-do uh, file, okay? And then what we're going to do is we're going to render out a to-do here. I'm just going to render out three to-dos. Just like this is just pretty much React as we know it, right? React as we know and love it. So now we save this. We should see um, I am a to-do, I am a to-do, I am a to-do. All right, so oh. if we go ahead and save this. It's erroring out, I think, right now. Uh, oh, is it not? It's, uh, because we didn't save the to-do file. I just saved the to-do file. Now it'll be good. Okay, yeah. There we go. It says, I am a to-do, I am a to-do, I am a to-do. Awesome. All right. So now we can see the three to-dos that have popped up. So that's cool. So everything works as we expect. Now, we all have known, uh, we've come to understand React and React. Each component can have something called props, right? So nothing has changed in React Native. We can use the same thing. We can use props. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our to-do.js and we're going to accept some props. Okay, so we're going to go props and we're going to destructure the props here. We're going to say, let's just, every to-do has a title. So yeah. let's go ahead and give it a title. Um, and then here, rather than saying I am a to-do, we're going to have the tick mark and then we're going to say title. Dude, yeah, we should call these. Uh, we should call these like React Native Crash Course or something. Yeah, we should. Okay, like, yeah, that's cool, man. We should do that. Yeah, like Crash Course. Um, and then here, also interesting oh, nice. fact. Uh, I don't know if you saw my post on on Instagram, but it shows you about ES6 destructuring and default values. If you don't give it a value right now, there's no value there, right? So if if we didn't give it a value, you can actually give it a default fallback. So you could say like, let's just call it like, um, like if you don't give it a value, then it will by default go to take the dogs out for a walk. Let's just give it a random example, take dogs out for a walk. And we save it. Now, every single one which wasn't passed a prop by default gets take dogs out for a walk. I see, see that. Is, yeah. uh, is the cool iPhone though. simulator working now or no? Um, it's, it's a bit slow. So right now it's not like, uh, it's not reaching over there. See, I'm still on that old example. I see. As in the tunnel, the tunnel isn't working. Um, the the simulator isn't working because of the operating system problem. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I remember now. Yeah. So now if we go to app.js and we go back here, um, what we can do is let's go ahead and pass in a title. So for the first one, we can say like let's just say take trash out. So because you need to go to, as you just follow me. Yeah. There we go. So we're gonna say take the trash out. For the second one, we're gonna say um, code React Native Tin Devs Tin Dev App. 
And then the final one will say eat code sleep. So nice. And now we should be able to save that and we should see that get passed through as props, right? So now you can see this is awesome, right? Because now all of our React knowledge is pretty much safe to say that it's, it's being carried across to React Native, right? Um, now we haven't touched on any of the actual React Native core things like, you know, the, the header navigation, things like that. We're just showing you how to get up and running with the React Native sort of starting template, the, the sort of differences initially. And what we can do is after we get this, like a to-do app working, we can go ahead and introduce some of that functionality. Um, but think about it. With React Native, they make it so easy, dude, to have like tabs yeah. as well as like navigation stacks. So you know that when you go forward and you can hit back and swipe back and things like that. Dude, um, I just got that pretty quick. a pretty genius idea. What's up? Oh, damn. I was going to actually screen record my iPhone screen and then yeah. play it as an IG reel with the time lapse. So on, so basically you'd be able to see the app developing from scratch to like finish of hours of work. You see what I'm saying? Oh, nice. Yeah. IPhone. We'll do that. Yeah. We'll have it running on, on, yeah, that'd but be sick. I, I can't do that because I'm sharing my iPhone and trying to do that. So it doesn't work. Yeah. We'll, we'll find a way to, to, to capture it. Do I need this screen or should I just remove it? Cause it, it looks pretty, it doesn't even look like an iPhone. Yeah, it's not that great. <laughs> um, I'm gonna, I'm just I mean, gonna... we can, we'll keep it. Yeah, we'll keep it on our screen. Uh, you know, uh, the shared screen. All right, I just removed that screen. Okay. Yeah. Now I'm gonna go ahead and check on the um, text input. All right. So now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna capture some text, right? And then we're going to go ahead and have like some kind of input build and do things like that. So previously what we would have done in this sort of situation is we would have like an input and then this input would have like an on change and we'd call it map it to state and then we'd sort of have an enter key and stuff like that. But in this case, in React Native, we use something called a text input component. Okay. Mm -hmm. This text input component, we need to import it. And then what we do is, it takes some props, right? It's, and then its own little custom props. So uh, here, what it has is it has a style, it has a value. So it has two things: a value, and it has something called on change text. So typically, we're used to on change, right? But in React Native, it's on change text. So you see, there's just small differences, guys. But once you know these small differences, it's really not that bad. Also, bro, we just hit over a thousand likes. Oh shit. That yeah. is amazing. Yeah. Yo. Thank you guys so much for that. And also, we are actually at $265 in donation. That is huge. Thank you guys so much. $265 <laughs> in donation? Yeah. Dude, that what is the hell? Absolutely oh nuts. That's insane. If you guys are enjoying this Love so far, that. smash that like button so this video goes out to more and more people. And we just hit 17,000 views on this. Yeah, love that, dude. Right. So now on the on change text. So previously we would have had e dot target dot set. You know, target dot value all that nasty stuff. Yeah. But in React Native, it literally just gets the text, right? So we go ahead and say text, and then we need to map it to something. So we know about hooks in React, right? We know how to like this. We can capture state in React. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say const, and then we're gonna have a, a value for the input field. So we're gonna say um, value set input so we're just writing a react hook here and then we're going to say use state yeah. so this is what we're used to right uh and then this would be a placeholder here so i'm just going to say um let's see we don't even need a place so we're just going to keep it blank and then what we need to do is import this from react so this goes into literally as we normally understand and know react so we're going to say import from react there we go and i don't need this one so that's all good and then what we can do is we can go ahead and say uh, on What are we working text, on right now, by the way, Sonny? I'm just adding an input field now. So we're adding an input so field. Then we can, we can, so we can type in like something to do, right? Yeah. Okay. So I just, okay. uh, and let me it's, just visualize it here. So cool. Something like this. And then we just type in things and we'll add them as a to do. 
Exactly. Cool. Exactly. So we're going to have like some stuff there and then um, so forth. Uh, one sec, dude. Um, <clears throat> it's, my, it's my sister. I said, I'll just live. I'll call you in a sec. Okay. So uh, text input value input on change text set value. Okay. There we go. Nice. And then what we do is close this out, save. And now what we should see is should have an input field if we didn't break something. So let's see how the input field looks. And I think what we need to do is actually set a style for this input field. So we should see if it doesn't pop up. Okay, we do have an input field, but it's very small. So right now you can't actually see it, but it's actually, if you click under eat code sleep. Yep, eat code, click under it. Okay, yep, there we go, I see it. Yeah, so you see that, right? So what we're gonna do is Dude, we're gonna Dude, that's so cool it. that so I can it. actually use it on my phone. Yeah, man, like and, it, and it'll pop up your your text thing, right? Yeah, I can. Uh, yeah, I just typed in with my phone, and I hit enter, and it did it. But what's cool is what I'm typing there isn't showing up here. Yeah, so that's it's cool. literally like a running a separate instance on your phone. Nice, perfect. So here now, what we're gonna say is we're gonna call this style. Let's just say. It's the, um, and we're going to find, we're going to use some kind of convention here afterwards, but um, for now, let's go ahead and just call this uh, to do input. Oh, we just got another donation. Thank you so much. Apurup Bushetti says, Sunny Kazi, keep up the good work. You guys make it so simple to understand. I love that, man. Thank you so much. Dude, I just got an idea for building an um, uh, Instagram reel or a TikTok. What if we screen yeah. recorded our everything that we're building, right? And then yeah. over a 30 second period, so like imagine it's called let's build Tinder or let's build TikTok from scratch in 30 seconds. And then it's just a time yeah. lapse of the code and the app being built out from start to finish. I think it'll be dope, man. I think we should always be recording the, the, it's the being sort of stream. Oh, you mean as in time lapse it and just have the entire in, thing in like a thirty in, second? In a thirty second IG yep. reel or a thirty second like uh, or a fifty nine second TikTok. I feel like those will actually 100%. blow up and get like millions of views. Hundred percent, that'll be insane. Because the thing would just be so quick. Like it'd be yeah, three hours in in fifty seconds. Dope, yeah. man. Let's do it. So guys, I added this in. So we have got to do input, and then we say styles dot to do input. And then we added a height of 40, border color red, and a border width of one. Save it. We should, if we didn't do anything wrong, we should see this name. Now we got the, we highlighted it, right? So what I'm going to do is add it, give it a little bit of margin around it. So I'm going to say margin of 20, save. And we should get a tiny bit of a margin around that now. And that should go ahead and get that around us. There we go. So now we've got a little margin. And what I want now is a button underneath it, right? So button. And again, for the button stuff, I'm going to go ahead and just give a check. And guys, this is all we're doing is we're literally just checking through the code. We're checking through how things work uh, and an example code. And then we're pretty much applying this the same principle and just doing it ourselves. So for buttons, um, they actually are a self-closing component. I think you can actually have another one, but here we're going to have a button. The title of the button is going to be add to do. Yeah. And then it has a special click. Um, yeah, hundred percent. Go ahead and text us. And it's not a bot. Yeah, exactly. That's one thing, dude. That's one thing that I would hate, right? You know, when people say text me and I'm like, yeah, but am I really going to get through to them? Guys, when you text that number, you are going to get through to us. Yeah. It's literally us and you can chat with us. So it's, it's like, that's what I'm always skeptical about when I do it, but it's not a bot, it's us, you know, which is awesome. Um, okay, so we've got add to do, and now we're going to say, we've got the title, and then we're going to say, let's just give it a color, and we'll leave the color for now. We'll just say on press. So on press, right? And now, Kazi, what we want, right, is when you type in that, you're going to type in that, that, that sort of input field, yeah, and then on press, right? So when, when you press the button is underneath it. So right now you can't see a button. So I'm going to go ahead and add the button in now. So it should freak out because we haven't imported the button. So save it. <laughs> so 
So now yep, we should see a button. button underneath that in any second. Now we should see a button. Um, Expo, by the uh, way, just, Joseph. What was that? Joseph asked long time ago, React CLI or Expo? And I was just like, oh, that looks like a fucking yeah. beautiful button, man. And it looks amazing on the mobile device too. Yeah. So now you got that gorgeous button with the clicking. And then what we want is, we want it so that when we what type it looks in. like on the phone. So check out the app right. on the phone, guys. And if you've scanned it, you should be able to actually follow along with us. Yeah. Sick. And it's, and the cool part is that's going to be the actual native button to an Android. That's going to be a native button to an iOS. So you see, like, it will actually look native to the platform that you're on. So imagine when we click this, we want to do something, right? So we're going to go ahead and do, uh, like, an on press. And then here, I want to trigger off a function. So you see it's very similar to... Like I haven't coded in React Native in ages, but it's very like intuitive, right? So let's just create a function called add to do. And then this function, all it's gonna do now is it's gonna go ahead and we're gonna trigger this when we call the add to do function. And we're just gonna go ahead and say, um, and this should work. We should say set input. No, we need a list of to do's. So I'm gonna create another variable. And we're gonna call this one to do's set to do's and this is just going to be an empty array okay and then afterwards what we're going to do now is we're going to say set the to do's to be whatever the current to do's were so we're going to keep the to do's and then and i'm going to append, just push append whatever the input of them was. we're writing right what was that and then whatever we type in the input field it'll append it to that array of to do's exactly hundred exactly that and the reason why i'm putting it in front is so that it comes at the top without much extra coding got it i'll prepend it yeah and then we prepend it yeah and then we do set input and i'm going to make this blank so that way it clears the input field now to be honest like i think i think that is literally the same that should work now before we go ahead and test this what i'm going to do is i'm going to render rather than having three static things like this I'm just going to put a little map. So I'm going to say to do's dot map. I'm going to say map through every single to do and return a to do. Man, I love React because it's just showing me, like, it just shows you how powerful this is. Like, even when you're doing it with, with a native um, platform. Yeah. So then you're going to say to do. It's like, literally, pretty much a React app. Yeah, dude. It's like, you see what I mean? Like, there's minor differences, but like, you literally go ahead and like, Oh, it's so cool, man. Yeah. Like, and this is going to allow people to go ahead and build apps, which is, it's just really crazy that we're going to start seeing apps on the app store. Yeah. That people have learned to code from us. It, it's so cool, man. That would be, yeah, that would actually be dope. That would be really Yeah, like guys, cool. if you go ahead and release any app at any point in time, whether you're watching this video, like a few months from now and you're watching a replay and you released an app, Make sure you let us know, like on Instagram or anything. Hit us up on Instagram and and yeah, go ahead and let us know. That would be insane. Yeah. So Kazi, now what we're gonna do? Let's go ahead and save this file because for, for for some reason it's not saving on my side. Okay. So, so let's save it. Yeah. And then it should hot reload. Okay. Oh, now, nice, bro. That's dope, right? That is fucking awesome. All right, let's go um, work out in the morning. And uh, we'll put a hit a add to do. We will then um, eat 150 grams of protein. And then... Um, so much for Philip Jones, one dollar donation. Appreciate that, dude. Yo, this is clean. Clean. Now, dude, can you can you already imagine, right? Hook this up to Firebase, make an app, deploy it, even for me and you tracking yes. our stuff day to day. Yeah. Oh, like we could literally go ahead and like dude, I'm so excited. Already have a app. 
Yes, I'm so down for this, bro. Like I can actually see this helping out. I'm I'm writing this out in the on the mobile app and it's just such a cool yeah. experience. Come on, focus. Look at that. Hey, look at that guys. You see that? Looks... It is actually actually a native app. You see the keyboards popped up, everything's there. That's that's awesome, man. Looks clean. Dude, nobody that's does dope. it like this, right? Like even all the people who show you how to make apps, they never even open up their fucking iPhone, like to show you what it looks yeah. like. Right? They're just always coding on the Exactly. You just want to see the actual, you know, like it's always cool to see it like yeah. um on a on a browser, but actually see it on a phone, it's like, okay, it's tangible, it's real, you know? Yeah, it's true. Uh, also, there's another thing called touchable opacity. I remember that one. Um, okay, so you can also, so a button is good, right? We all know what a button does. It's, it's just a clickable button. Uh, you can also have something called touchable opacity, um, and that's something which I, I've used before. So imagine you wanted a clickable image or something. Instead, you would go ahead and use something called, um, uh, you would do this. You would have something like this. You'd have touchable. How do we give it a key? Or pass. How, How do we give it a key? Oh, good shout. Each okay, of the items. Good shout. Yeah, so these ones. Yeah. yeah. If we want to give it a key. Do we just say key um, equals so something? Could, yeah, so here you would just say key equals like this. Uh -huh. But in this case, you would want to give it, so it has to be a unique value. So you could use a library called UUID um, to generate random keys. But in this case, it's not, I mean, we're not really going through the performance side of things. But what I would recommend is using uh, a, a package called UUID V4, I think it's called. Can we and just that give one, it? Okay, cool. Yeah, that one, you can pretty much go ahead and generate random keys for this. I mean, if you want to do it a hacky way, you can get the index, but that's always a terrible way of doing it. You shouldn't really select from round upon way of doing it. Um, okay. Awesome. So that's that's good. Um, dude, you know, I want to sort of mess around with now. So we, we've got already got a to-do app working, right? Yeah. Now, hooking up Firebase and stuff is literally as simple as we've done it before, except in this environment. So we could do that, but that's not going to really be as exciting at this point in time. Let's try and have a look at something like uh, a status bar or, you know, like something native to a phone uh -huh. that we can kind of get working. Okay. So let's just have a look on, I'm just looking right now at the React Native docs. So if you look at React Native and the core component docs, and we can pretty much go ahead and check out um like for example the, the, the nice thing with react native by the way dude is if you have a list right you know before you would have to have div and overflow and stuff like that now all you do is surround it in something called a um a scroll view mm. and the entire container becomes scrollable oh really are you serious yeah so you don't have to, yeah so you just literally how do i do that <laughs> rather than i just being, wrap i just wrap all so, this in so, scroll view yeah, what? So not all of it. So we're going to, so where the, where we map out the to dos, let's wrap that in something called a scroll view, right? And then what we'll do is we'll drop this down. We'll go ahead and cut this, paste it here, boom, and we'll tab this in. And now if we go ahead, all we need to do is import this. Save, 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 save. Um, there you go. And now what we should see. Oh shit! Is... Yeah, you're right. The the to dos are scrollable on my phone actually. Yeah. So now if you add them, so if, I'm just going to try and test one. Right there. So you see that? Yeah, scrollable, which is nice. So now, like, if you had a scrollable list, that's all you need to do to get scrollable functionality. Um, which is which is awesome, yeah. So you can use some reasons you can use flat list uses a recycler view for better performance. Yeah. So yeah, you could use flat list. I'm looking at that now. 
fully cross-platform, a performant interface for using it. Okay. Yeah, so flat list is something I would, okay. So I'd actually go ahead and, and maybe use a flat list instead of that. Um, that's pretty cool. Bro, and I can't can wait to items. start building that freaking app, bro. When can we start building that app? Because I'm freaking getting hungry. Which one, the uh, the PS or the the, the internal? It could be it could one. be for anybody, honestly. Um, it could be for all students, but something where yeah. we can just log. Like, uh, I mean, workout would be fun too. I was thinking one with freelancing where people can like log in how much income they made. So, for example, yeah, that would I, be. You know, if I type in, so like for example, what I imagine right now is just a very simple version of it would be like. If I typed in uh, 150 here, whoops, 150 right here, we just have this like uh, internal dashboard here and then we can just see, oh, today all our students combined, like we collectively generated $150. Yeah. You know, or if like multiple students, but they made 150, then maybe you'll say like, oh, we made $300 collectively at Clever Programmer. Yeah. What we should do maybe then in that case, we'll make a student app, right? Yeah. Make like a student app and push it on the app store. And that one pretty much will have like a very nice interface. They can pretty much go ahead and log their income, attach like a picture to it. Yeah, I would want it to be like with proof. So for example, it needs to be approved by somebody at Clever Programmer. It can't just be like, because, because otherwise people will just start putting in like $50 million, you know, they made this week. So yeah. with this, they, they will like put a picture proof and then somebody will just click approve and then it's good to go. Exactly. Devin Gray says, I could make that income logging app by tonight, maybe a couple nights. Oh, if, shit. Dude, go for it. Honestly, <laughs> that, is, that would be, that's awesome. Nice little challenge there. Yeah, that would be, that would be really dope because I've always like dreamed about having something like this. It'd be so cool to have students in one place, log their things, be able to see it, have clear cut direction of what to do and see collectively that there are other students just like them making an income. And you know how like Venmo makes it visible to you, like yeah. other people paying each other, you know, it's been like, Oh, this guy just paid um, somebody like 10 bucks, you know? Yeah. I wanted to be like that where eventually you can see the avatar of other students and it's like, oh, this guy just made $500 freelancing on like an Upwork project or something. Yeah, that would be awesome, man. Like a leaderboard style, like Gamify. Yeah. So it's like it inspires you. Oh, recent activity, you know, like uh, this person just made 30 bucks from coding. Yeah. You're like, oh, shit. I think we should go, cool. man. That'd be sick. And dude, you know what's so cool yeah. is that the we could have this app built in React Native. And then the admin app to go ahead and improve and, and reject based on the, the, the evidence that people give us. Yes. That could be on a React app just for us. Oh, yeah. On, That's true. Yeah. Which we deploy using Firebase. <laughs> I mean, the whole thing can be done with the React Native because I would want the students to be able to use the app to log their activity. No, so they would, but then for us, as in, would you say, would you want us to go ahead and do it? I mean, it could be another, that like, we could use it for us as well. Um, yeah, I mean, what are you saying? So like React Native for the students and a React Native for us too, right? For the dashboard side? So you could, I'm saying you could either do React Native or the benefit I would say is have a React Native app for the students to log it. Yeah. And then for us as the admin, because we would want to not only be able to do it on our phone, yeah. but also be able to do it on a desktop. Yeah. So, so if you build it in React as a PWA, then you can install the PWA on your phone as an app. So using React. Oh. So we okay. would have the full. We would have a full app using React. The students would have a React Native app available in the App Store. Yeah. And you see, like, it's crazy, right? Like, that that would, would be. be to... That would be awesome, dude. That would be awesome. Yeah. Benefit of that way. Is that okay? This is something which is actually really valuable. Also, Calvin Commander, uh, Commander, thank you, dude. For a Canadian ten dollar donation. He says running out of words for this massive value. You guys are killing it. Super pumped for React Native and appreciate this very much. Keep it going. Let's go. Thank you so much, Calvin. Always coming in strong. Appreciate you, dude. Thank you. That is awesome, brother. Appreciate it. Yeah. 
So, Kazi, this is something which uh, is, is really actually like a quite an important part is that whenever you make an app, right? So yeah. imagine we deployed an app to the App Store. It has an approval process, which means that like, you know, that when you code an app in React, yes, you can just pretty much hit Firebase deploy and the thing's up. Like and it's live. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Like literally in seconds, that thing is live. Yeah. But if you do an app in React Native, you need to remember that if you need to bundle the app, get everything ready, get like the sort of uh, the thumbnail and everything ready for the the, the App Store stuff, yeah. submit it to the App Store for review. Yeah. And then there's a process to get that version out. Yeah. Right. So what you would want is you need so sort of for for the admin side of things, you want the constant updating and and be able to increase the sort of you know the views sure. and, and stuff that we can see yeah. for the students we want it to be very controlled so that they can only see and this is really important for you guys because if you're pretty much going and thinking about do i need a react app or a react native app things didn't like that that you have to start considering yeah so in our case if we were to build this app react native is the way for the students uh, but a react app is the way forward for yeah like our, us to go ahead and review it see things approve reject yeah know. oh shit um jason just said to hey, me jason is like devin yeah. to be honest i'm in the mode for a react project i'd be super down to work on it with you if you're free so they're actually thinking about teaming up on this that's sick and maribon let's go maribon hey, in the house beautiful girlfriend is in the house because love you, you guys are smashing it. Honestly, it's it's fun, man. It's fun being back on on live together. Those, yeah, those dance videos are fucking sick. Like I love seeing them whenever they're on. Like, but I don't know. She puts like one story in a fucking week of the dance, but more of those stories. Like I I love seeing those because it gets me hyped up. I love when people yes. are good at yeah. something and then they do it, and it's like gets you riled up. Yeah, she she's motivating, man. She she pushes for it. Yeah. Um. Absolutely. Actually, the App Store isn't harsh on the approval. The App Store isn't harsh. So Jason Francis is actually he says the App Store isn't harsh on the approval process. It took me two days to get my React Native app approved. React uses React Native. For me. Okay. So very important thing to mention here. It is pretty strict on the approval process. Trust me. Like when you get to the apps which are more complicated, they can really be a pain sometimes to approve your apps. Uh, it really depends what your app does. So like if you have some kind of like, they, like it, they just get a bit annoying with things. So, so yeah. And uh, Merwan says, yeah, she goes, I'll post more. Yeah, that's it. Dude, that's oh. it, man. More positivity. That's it. You got to push for it. More content for everyone. That's it. Um, okay. Awesome. So, so, okay. So cool. So in terms of doing that, I mean, I'm pretty excited to even like, build really simple versions of it. Even if we want to start out with the, like our own f version of fitness or something, I'm down for that too. Like where we can just drop notes on our workouts the day before, but it's like shareable. That would be cool. Or we can just start working on the other project. Which one do you want to like start with? So I think we already have a, a really strong approach that's working for us. We're tracking fitness at the moment. Um, and, and for anyone who is interested in that, we and Kazi and Rachel on our team use something called Done, and we track our workouts from that. So it works really well for us right now. So I think the one that's going to bring everyone the most value is that tracking app. So is sure, it, yeah. what would be awesome, dude, is to break down the app together, yeah. figure out that we're going to need navigation, we're going to need a database, we're going to need authentication, yep. and build the entire thing out together, yep. and then we build out back end bit for the admin that'd be that'd be dope that would be really cool i mean that is a project i'm really excited to work on and who knows it might take us two three weeks of continuous work but i think that will just just personally you and i that will get us excited as fuck so yeah. it'll give like, us something to work towards yeah. every day yeah and we would definitely like not stop until the thing was built out properly and right. released in the app store that's true. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you say? You want to get started on that? Yeah. So Sunday King says, would we be able to see the process? Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. You guys will be able to see the entire process from from um, scratch. Okay, cool. Okay. So uh, let's maybe do something with it, even if it's tiny right now, if you're down. 
Let's do it, dude. Let's actually, so let's think about it. We're, we're going to need um, some kind of navigation inside of the app, right? So I'm just checking something quickly. Can we okay, start so, with just oh, this? Like yeah. literally, can we start with just this? Where if you can put in one like 150 uh, and I can put in like, let's like a, almost like a to-do list, but just yeah. for numbers. So it's like if I put in 150 and then I put in another 150, it just gives you a 300. Like it literally just sums shit up. That I think would be like yeah, a yeah, really good start. Let's do it. Okay. So, um, right. So, so we want two input fields and then it would just sum it up at the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we can do that very nicely, actually dynamically. No, it should so just have one. And... It should have just one input field. And then every yeah. time you enter an amount in there and hit add amount or something or add income, right. it keeps adding it to the total. Okay. So let's do that. So maybe, maybe let's have two input fields, one which says, um, what did you, what work did you do? And oh. then and another one, which says, how much did you make? Got it. Okay. So like a descriptive field of what you did and how, then the other one is like how much you made. Okay. Love that. Okay. That's cool. That's cool. I can go with that. Yeah. Yeah. So right now we don't need the to do.js. So we're going to get rid of the scroll view for now. Uh, the view here, we can keep the text input. We're just going to copy this cause we're going to have two text inputs now. Um, the style we can keep for now very simple. Um, we're going to need two input fields. One is going to be for the description. So here we're just going to go ahead and we're going to get rid of this add to do button. Um, and then here we're going to comment out this one and we're going to go ahead and say, we're going to, we need two. we're going to need description and we're going to do set description because that's a nice little standard that you should stick with. And then we're going to copy that. And the next one is going to be the, let's call it the, um, amount, right? And then you do set amount, set amount. Oh, and this amount by default will be uh, zero. And then we're going to have, rather than a list of to do's, we're going to have a, um, what, what would you call it? Like the list of, of all the uh, jobs? Uh, li or li yeah, list no? of incomes, list of jobs. Let me think. Like that list is going to be, because it could be a Ent task that you made money It's almost from. like an um, income entry or something or entry. Yeah, like an entry, entries, right? Yeah, it sounds um, kind of nasty, but I'll, I'll keep thinking about it. Logs? No. <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> That yeah, sounds yeah. worse. <laughs> you could you could just do entries for now. I think that's pretty good. Yes. Yeah, so oh, list of gigs. That's cool. What's that? Like enter your gigs. gig. Oh, yeah. That's kind of cool. Enter your gig. Yeah, that's actually pretty cool. Gigs. Um, I got that idea from um somebody who just wrote it Calvin. down. Calvin. Calvin. Yeah. Yeah. He actually donated earlier as well. Fuck awesome. Yeah. Um. Sons okay, of so King says, let's look at this teamwork. We're watching Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak. Let's go, Bright baby. <laughs> nice. Fuck gigs. Um, yeah, let's do gigs. Let's go with gigs. Yeah. So gigs. Set gigs. Yeah. And now your gigs will pretty much be... Um, and just to sort of draft out, right? Imagine one gig, right? It would have a description... And the, the, one of the description could be like the freelance, like freelance job with Kazi and the amount could be something like 499.99 is what we made. Right. So that's going to be one of the objects inside. Okay. And then we're going to have, um, what the fuck? Microsoft to do uh, app just like copied wonder list. So hard. Yeah, I think I saw that. What's it called? It's called. Um, oh shit! Did they buy Wonderlist, bro, and changed it to Microsoft To Do? Because like, Wonderlist. It looks the same. Yeah, they must have done that because now when you look up Wonderlist, it doesn't show up at all. They probably did. Wouldn't be surprised. God damn it! So now we're gonna change this one to the description. This one to the amount, and this will be set amount. So here we set amount like this. 
Uh-huh. And now we don't want this to be uh, the text input. So text input is cool, but I wonder what's the best way to have like a number input because text input is all right, but we want like a the native number picker to come up on the phone. So I think what we would be looking for is um, first of all, you can change like a, a type of text input. So and I'm just going to type all, in React. All native. we should get to today is like literally get to one bare bones graph, like a bar graph, yeah. um, if possible. And then the rest is just like summing up to that one amount. Yeah. Let's do it. A bare bones, wait, a, a number, did you say, or a graph? Yeah, I mean, we can get started with the number. I think that's great. As a bonus, if we could just get a graph, that like a bar graph, so whatever number yeah. you put in, it just has a bar graph that represents that total sum. Yeah. But if that is like too much, then we can just do that tomorrow or something. But like, I think working towards this app, dude, will be so sick because it's like actually real and something exciting for us too. Yes, do it, man. Exactly. So if we had a keyboard type, right, that's the one that we're looking for. Numeric or number. There is actually another one called so numeric. So Kazi, on your phone right now, um, for numeric, is that is that the is that a good keypad sort of to get? So let me save this. Save, 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 save. save. What are you talking there about? You oh, now oh, check let your me phone. See, let me see. Okay, see. and check the the bot. So both yeah, yeah, yeah. of them. Oh, Epic. this one shouldn't be numeric. Epic. Yeah, that one you can see. So this is numeric. what you're yeah, talking that's about. The, that's exactly what we wanted. Yeah. Nice. So, I mean, but it doesn't have decimal points, does it? I can add decimals at the bottom. Is there a dot? Yeah. Can you see a dot? Yeah, at the bottom. Can't you there see is... it? Oh, shit. No, okay, okay. It's just like faint on my screen. Okay, perfect. Yeah, you can add right. decimals. Perfect. So then we've got that on the bottom one. So the bottom one is going to be keyboard type numeric. Um, so that way we know how to go ahead and get that. And then the top one is going to be this. And then what we're going to do is, I think they also have placeholder here. So let's go ahead and type in placeholder. Let's see if we say enter a description. Maybe if they've got a placeholder, we should get the placeholder from that. Let me just type in. Yeah, we have got placeholder. And guys, nice. if you're wondering how I, I found all that, I literally am on the docs, React Native, and I just did control, Command F, and I'm just typing in placeholder and seeing if it if it pops up. Um, so there we go. So enter a description, land to the client. Um, and then the second one would be, um, yeah, so we could just say, I wonder if we could do it in this one as well, placeholder equals... Um, enter the amount you made. Save. And I wonder if because it's zero, I don't think it'll show. Okay. So I think what we need to do instead is make this um, actually blank. And save that. See if that comes up. Save. Nice. Yeah. The amount you made. Awesome. All right, and we can also maybe say in dollars or something. Yeah. Um, yeah, so something like in dollars. There we go. Dope. All right, so then we've got the enter description into the amount you made, and then some kind of button. So a button at the bottom which would say um uh, uh add, I guess, or add 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 gig or submit gig or add gig. So title, and then here would be, rather than add to do, just say add gig. That's actually really cool, add gig. Yeah, right? Then we're going to have add gig. And then this one is going to be an arrow function. And all this is going to do is when you hit add gig, it should go ahead and and do set gigs to whatever was inside of gigs. Oh, no, it's going to be an array still. So it's an array still. It's going to be whatever's inside of gigs. Plus a new object which has a description of our description that we typed in. Dude, and can you a- imagine, bro? Can you imagine 20, 30 days from now, consistent work on this app? And 20, 30 days from now, imagine the whole thing is completely done. Everybody was there alongside us as we built every single part of this out. And then we hit 
publish to the App Store and everybody just fucking goes to the App Store and goes wild on this, dude. Crazy, right? Can you imagine that? Dude, that'll be sick. Everyone would be like, just, man. That'll be fun, dude. And it would be so awesome because every time, it would, yeah, just, oh, man. Their mind is like, funny. I feel like we should just go to LA. Yeah, and like, Sunny, I feel like we should just go to LA. <laughs> yeah, we should, honestly. We really do, man. We need to come to LA. So, to do input. So, we're going to change this to do input. To, but, but let's just sorry, this input. you can finish your thought. You were, you were saying something. Um, no, no, I'm saying so. Uh, when we actually, like, guys, like, we, there's so many people are making money, and, and, and it's so hard to keep track of that number. Like, and this is true, actually. Remember, guys, I can't believe you haven't met each other in person. It's insane, dude, it? when you think about it. Like, <laughs> how much we've done. And we've never actually shook hands. Like, it's insane. Holy shit, bro. What's the um, ROI of us using Skype and Zoom? I know, right? <laughs> when the next person, next time someone tells me, you can't work as effective. And, and you know, like o over remote work, I'd be like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. But dude, I mean, in person would be like at a whole another level, dude. That'd be insane. God, man. We have to record that. We'll get like a whole vlog when we do that. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, man. Um, so now we've got this and ad gig does that. So now it should go ahead and and do description amount. Okay, awesome. So that should set the gig. And what we want to do is after you submit the gig, you want to go, I like that gig. That's pretty I cool. Like the, I really like that, yeah. Set description. We're going to reset that back to zero. And as in we're going to go blank and we're going to say set amount back to blank as well. What should Save. we call this app, by the way, guys? So we'll take some name suggestions because you guys have much better suggestions than us, to be honest. Yeah, go ahead and let us know, guys. Um, Kazi, also, we want to protect against them clicking add gig before it's, um, right, it's, right, it's, right, uh, right. so the but, value yeah, like if you or whatever. Yeah. Like if you, if you, if you haven't got, um, a, a, an amount or a description, you need both to be able to click add gig. Mm -hmm. So to do that, we go to disabled here. So you see here where it says, uh, button and they should have disabled. So I'm going to just double check. So button, I'm looking at the docs and we see this. Nervon is like, you're awesome. both going to cry. Sunny will jump on you. <laughs> I will, dude. I legit, <laughs> it's just, gonna be an insane one. You just jump and I just hold. Like, oh, slow mo fucking music. <laughs> so we're spinning around. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, you just see Aaron running behind Frankie comes sliding in. You just see like Amberly and like Mervon and slow mo, like, what the fuck? <laughs> And then Nas just like dances over. <laughs> Everybody just like disgusted They're like, with this music playing in the background. <laughs> like Sunny man, oh, I've been fucking waiting for this. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be quite a day. Oh, God, God damn He's Corona. So <laughs> Bloody coronavirus, man. All right, do we have to say disabled if, if, there is no amount and there is no description. So now it sh should be, once I save this, oh, my, it should my be gig disabled. Tracker, that's and cool. Oh. Okay, my bad. <clears throat> nice. Now it's disabled. I see that. Boom. Awesome. Why is there a, a, a button? Like how the button looks here looks pretty cool. It doesn't show like that on the mobile device. But I mean, it's it's not that big of a deal. We don't have to worry about that right now. We can just focus on this for now. What was that? If there's a the button that looks how it looks here, it doesn't look like that on the mobile device. It does the button here. Yeah. So the reason being, dude, is because this is the one on the mobile device is native to iOS. So what you would even have to do is style it so okay. that it's going to be consistent across all the platforms. But by default, the button component renders to the, the 
um, component that's on iOS or the component that's on Android. So on iOS is the default Android button. Uh, iOS button on Android is the default Android. Got it. So we got some cool ones. We got my gig tracker. We got Gigflow. Gigflow. Oh, nice. Yeah. All right. Cool. So now what we're gonna do. Yeah. Go ahead. So we have everything essentially added in, right? So like it should be kind of there, like it should be inside of our state. Uh -huh. um, and to test it, we just want to render it out just to quickly have a little test. So imagine we added our stuff in and then underneath all of this, let's just go ahead and say gigs dot map for yep. every gig. Yeah. We should render out. Oops. It's total. For every gig. Uh, so, so we actually firstly want to, we want to show the, the gig now. Oh, oh yeah, true, true, true. The total, maybe like, we can just put at the very... top total. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would have the total at the top, like you know, the total would rack up at the top, and then underneath maybe a scrollable list of the gigs. That's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So something like that, and then we could say like the gig dot description, um, and what we could do here is we can actually, you know, we'll keep it like this. I'd rather show you off. So we can do gig dot description gig dot amount. And then put a dollar sign here. Um, capital T for the, the that one. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. And then maybe go save this. Save. Okay. So by default, it should already have one pre-populated. So we should be able to see. Indie gig, indie devs. Yeah, so you see it says freelance job with Kazi. If I go ahead and say, um, YouTube with Sunny. Uh, let's just type in 349 or something. Add gig. Boom. YouTube is Sunny 349. Okay. So it works. So if, we, if you now type in description and an amount, it'll push to that list at the bottom now. Oh, nice. So go ahead and give it a try. Oh, that's sick. Did it work? That is really cool. Yeah, it did. Don't you see no. it? Uh, there's a screen. My, I don't know why my screen share is, is a bit slow behind, but I'm looking at the feed as well. Okay, okay. dope. Nice. Yeah. So now what we can do is, um, so there's a really elegant way of doing this, but I always forget it. So I'm going to show you guys what I end up having to go through every time I do this. Um, oh, nice. Landed account not worked for $25 an hour. Did eight hours work from 200 Dope. Nice. Yeah. Um, so even do like, even getting to this point is like, it's very like, light but it's so powerful because yeah that's what i'm saying yeah we're, we're not far from like that's... the layout to the road is there you know it's like we know there. exactly how to get there now yeah um, like literally this is it like we're almost done with what we're looking for because i want to see this and see how students are doing like at a glance yeah and like within pwj we can make this a thing that like everybody tracks yeah exactly so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and make it so i'm just gonna add margin top um so what are you doing the elegant thing is that supposed to be the um oh no so i was gonna do a reduce to sum it up right so yeah, to sum it. So you see this this uh, total income, yeah. Uh huh. Um. So you could do it. I mean, there's there's many ways you can do this, right? Um. But what we're gonna have is every time the um uh, the gig basically, let's go ahead and say, let's have a piece of state called total, right? And this is just gonna be responsible for the total. So we're just gonna we're gonna prepare that piece of state. Now there's so many ways you can do this, but the total in the beginning is gonna be zero, right? Now we're gonna have a use effect. And I know what you're thinking. You're like, well, it seems like overkill, man. Why would you have a use effect? Yeah. Like, th there's a reason being is because this is, it's called decoupled code. When you code it like this, then imagine we was to plug in like a database and stuff like that. It's, it will just work for the future if we build it this way. Yeah. So like, it may seem like far-fetched, but it just means that whenever the gigs change, recalculate the total, which is exactly what you would want. If you think about it, every time the gigs change, you yeah. want to recalculate the total. Right. Right. So what we can say now is you can say gigs dot reduce. And I need to always double check. I mean, I, 
I always forget how to do a reduce by off by heart, but once I get it right, it's it's amazing the thing. So reduce is um, da, da, da. so a reduce would be give me each one second. Each gig should have a timeline so each person can see like a track history of the gig. That could I see what they're saying. So each basically like you can click within a gig and then like go and add shit to it. Um, Each one. One sec. Let's, let's do the reduce and then wait. Yeah, wait. Yeah, so you yeah, said yeah, each gig should have a timeline. I, I see so what each he's person saying. can see like. Oh, I see. Yeah, because because what like actual entry is different than a gig. Right, like gig is an actual like for example, if you land a gig with yeah, right, then you go you keep going into that gig and keep okay. Right now we don't even need to add that fanciness. We can add that as a next step. Right now we just need yeah brute force logging in income. Yeah, exactly. The total. Uh, I love I love what Amar is saying by the way. So I'm gonna like screenshot all the feedback that he's giving us and then uh we can actually go through it later but like it's actually pretty smart so he's even giving Don't examples man. you see them on my screen um, like he's like oh, example on well, january 2 i listed on fiverr then on january 5 someone found me and then on january 20 i delivered it so that's pretty cool i'm just gonna yeah show that. could be useful yes, for us. yeah this is actually really smart to build an app together with people because you're getting live feedback. So you're going to build a great app this way. Exactly. Now, let me explain this snippet to you and then we can go ahead and I'll show you how to make this even more elegant. But you see this reduce, right? Yeah. Assuming I've done it all right. I mean, it like, to me, it's just it's, like... It's, and, and what, and that's so, so, so what you're doing here is, and this is what you can even make this so damn elegant. So it's to the point of like this, right? So now and I okay, take this. To is this total a variable that I can uh, put? Like, can I use that total right here, Sonny? Yes, you can make that there. And this, rather than saying and um, making an, a, a little variable here, you can just go ahead and say set total. And what we're doing here. So you can remove. Should I remove that line? Okay, cool. Oh, nice. That looks elegant. Uh, use so effect is should. not defined. Use effect, you have to import it. Oh yeah, good job. Um, reduce is one of those ones, guys. Like even even you, after bro. coding. For, oh shit! Oops. Oh, you did. Um, it's one of those things where, like, even after coding for ages, you just forget. Like you you forget how to do the thing, and then you just you quickly check up an example, and you're like, okay, that's how I do it. So now look at that, dude. Total income four ninety nine, right? Dope. Now go ahead and add something. Holy shit, bro! What is this? Oh, okay. so is... that's what we. That's where the issue comes. So now you see here, uh -huh. it's total plus gig, right? So what it's doing is it's treating it as a string. Um, it's treating. As a string, yeah. So Wait, string because amount is a, string. So is a because is amount is a string. Why the fuck is yeah? It so a no, but that gets changed to you can change that to a zero. But the reason why we want that as a zero is because um, so you can cast it like that, but um, what you what you want to use is number. So yeah. you actually use number with a capital N. That's it. And then I think the total, the total should by the so total the initial value you define here. So you see this value here, yeah, which is zero. Let's go. I don't hey. even know React. Let's go. <laughs> That's it, man. That was sick. All right, dope. Nice. And then what we can say is um, total income. Just add the dollar sign before it, <laughs> and you get that. <laughs> Um, what you might run into in some corner cases, which I've definitely ran into before, is where you have, um, you add like a decimal. In this case, we're just doing adding, but when you do times income amounts, you should use a library to handle displaying a currency. 
because yeah. otherwise you'll get like 0.947 and <laughs> you know like it should be even i know it sounds simple to round up round down but you will get corner cases where that shit just goes crazy um all right okay good job now uh this as for styling this can be a go ahead and and or whatever is after the fatality it seems to be there. Oh, nice. Devin Gray says total equals zero or whatever is after the comma. If added, it's assumed to be zero. Yeah, so that's right. If we add it to be here, uh, it'll be zero. If we don't add that, I think you're right. I think by default it would fall to zero. Yo, Sunny, um, I'm gonna install this uh chart. React native chart kit. Let's have a look. React native chart kit. It's getting good downloads every week, so it looks good. Should we get Check it? it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just having a... Uh, oh, shit. It's got some beautiful... Beautiful charts, charts right? Shit. That's what I'm saying. It's looking great. And the data sets look good. Dude, I'm getting so okay. fucking excited because I'll be able to start logging in my income today on it. So I'm actually getting yeah. fucking excited about it because nothing like this exists. Exactly. Okay. Uh, okay, let's give this a try. Import... So let's import this. Shit. We need to do npm, uh, npm install, um, React Native chart kit. I did. I installed. Oh, it you already. didn't install it. Okay. Yeah. Um. Hold on. Why does it keep fucking bugging? All right. There we go. So bar chart, and then um, you create a view. And, um, holy shit, this looks complicated. It's... So we want, we want a line chart, right? So what I would say is literally no, no, no. just I don't, grab I don't the wanna, time. I don't want a line chart. I just want a, I want a bar chart actually, but I did copy. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. Where did I go wrong? I thought I did everything perfectly. <laughs> so, wait, you copied the entire thing, right? Yeah, the whole view. Or should I just copy it from the text? Um, no, you can copy the whole view. So what we'll do is we'll we'll pull this forward. So, so the indentation always makes it easier. So we can that's good. And now it's freaking out over what it's saying. Let's just check the error. So save this. To compile. And so we might have some can't resolve React Native SVG. So maybe let's just remove wherever we have. Oh. Right no, no, this also could be um, because React Native SVG. Did we, we did do it, right? We did do an install. We did React Native Chart Kit, but I don't think we did React Native SVG. Did Oh, we have so to we, do that? Yeah, so there's two there. You see that? Install the peer dependency. So um, npm i React Native SVG. React Native SVG. Like that? Dash yeah. Native Dash SVG. Okay. Dude, I'm, nice. not, I'm fucking getting excited. I love it, man, because I feel like we're going to start building some actual epic yeah, shit. Yeah, let's YouTube. go. <laughs> Dude, I'm getting in my, like, now I'm fucking hyped for this, you know? Yeah. So sick. Okay, so uh, also, so I saw, uh, yeah, so somebody wrote link. I saw a link in a comment, right? You don't need to do that anymore. So whoever, if you ever come across linking dependencies, you don't need to do that. Just stay away from that stuff. Trust me. Um, what is happening? Okay. So now line chart is not defined. Okay. That's a good sign because oh, now we're, we're gotcha. it's, uh, we need to import that. From, just did it. Just did it. Nice. Dude, I can feel my okay. brain engaging with everything now. Dimension is not. What's the saying? Line it says dimension is not defined. Dimensions. Um, uh, it's that's getting dimensions we... from React dimensions. Native, so I can actually. So this is actually from React Native. It's from React Native. Yeah. Where is React Native? I'm... Oh, uh, you got it. Nice. So I should. Oh, oh shit. shit, bro, that looks oh, good shit. as fuck. <laughs> Let's go. 
<laughs> oh man, bro, I am so oh, fucking excited, man. bro. Oh, <laughs> and this responsive. Holy man, I'm gonna That's reload dope. on my mobile device so I can get this chart. Oh, bro, this is so good. Bro, this looks so good. Holy shit. Dude, I can imagine soon we'll be doing like Apple Watch apps and shit. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. I want to see how much my students made with my I like Apple yeah. Watch. Yeah. Like, okay, today is a good day. We made three thousand dollars collectively. Okay, good day. Fucking, let's carry on. Today we got we only made five hundred. What the fuck, guys? Like, let's fucking get to work. <laughs> uh, wait, hold on. Why isn't it showing on my phone? Uh, because Jason Francis says, "Look at it on your phone. Looks even better." But it's not compiling on my phone for some okay. reason. Are you on the LAN on your phone? Just out of curiosity or not? Uh, no, I mean, I'm, I should be on tunnel. I'm getting a uh, like error that LAN, says... LAN would be a main. Try restarting Metro. So is it telling me to restart the expo thing or something? Uh, yeah, restart Metro is, is your bundler. So your bundler is working. Keep that up for a sec. Uh, let me quickly just grab your phone. Hold on. Let me, uh, there we go. Okay. So it's building your bundle. Let's see. Up. Okay. So while that's loading, um, so the data points here, we would actually go ahead and change to be, let's go ahead and see. Yeah. We would have your labels would be your entry, I guess, or something like that. Your People are saying restart use. expo, quit app and restart expo. Okay. So quit out of the app you don't, on my phone. But who, who said that? People, people in, the, are, in, the, in the chat, there's like, because my mobile app is not showing the thing. So they're like, quit your mobile app and then. Oh, yeah. So it says unknown, requiring unknown module four, if you know the module exists. That was, oh, that was the error I was getting. Requiring your yeah, unknown module four. Try restarting your main. Yeah, it's because of native dependencies. Okay, so in that case, you see where we're running the, running the bundler. So in your, uh -huh. the, where's the terminal? Uh, right now? Right here. Uh, oh shit, my thumbnail is so slow. My screen is slow. So get open the terminal, do control C, cut it off, and then do NPM start again. Dude, I am getting excited, bro. I know, right? Here we go. Let's tunnel this bad boy. Oh shit, one sec. Did you get it? It's downloading it. Mine's probably gonna take a while. Because, I mean, if we probably shouldn't ever continue too far ahead of where it breaks down on our iPhone, right? Because if it's not working on our mobile device at any one point, that's probably not a good idea to keep going further and further with it. Yeah, so, so this is where I would say for, before we go on the next session, definitely upgrade or use the iMac Pro, dude, or, or you know, something like that. Because it basically just be on the latest OS. I see. Okay. Yeah, because because that simulator is actually a really good testing way to do it. As in, like it will it will do it really quick with fast reloading. I see. Because um, okay. it's on your local. Yeah. You know. Got it. People are asking. To be fair, I wouldn't even. You don't even need to be on tunnel. Tunnels for everyone else. Um, you could just do LAN or local, mm. and it would be super quick for you. Okay. So. So if you change it from tunnel. And you change it to, uh, no, just even, I mean, you could do local or. Oh. 
The internet connection appears to be offline. Interesting. Uh, not working for me for some reason. When I do that, no. it says. Hold on. Uh, it just says could not connect to the server. That's all I get, bro. So okay. Now, now I'm so gonna yeah, connect. same with me. Connect. Shit, now the download has to start all over again. Oh, no, it's going pretty fast, actually. Oh, shit, it just flew past everything. Oh, let's go. We <laughs> are. That's it. Yeah, so you just have to rebundle native dependencies. That's it. Holy shit. That's Yo, dope, that man. is exciting, bro. Oh, shit. I got it, too. Nice. <laughs> Damn. Nice. You guys can now get it, too. I'm pretty sure you guys just have to scan this code. Just hover your phone over, and you should be good to go. Yeah. Wow. That is looking delicious, bro. That is looking fucking delicious. Exactly, man. I will take this view, and I will move this view to the top so i will move it hold on fuck every time you move it moves me stop following sonny all right i'm gonna add it right there and save and then look oh shit that was so much quicker than you know, it did it it did Oh, and I got rid of the I got rid of the padding as well, so it fixed that little bug. Why? Why can't I? Uh... Hmm. Oh shit, dude! As you type in, it's refreshing the. Why is my thing dead though? You can't scroll. No, like it says, site refused to connect or something. Oh, because, because you need to run it on the the um. This may have changed, so you need to open your. Terminal. Uh, terminal. Hit w. Hit w. And then that should spin up the uh, server for you. Uh huh. Okay. Now. Oh, look at that. That is clean. It's clean, bro. Um, okay, cool. So where is now what I want? What I want is a uh, bar graph, actually. So, so bar graph, or would you want it as every entry is? I want a bar graph so that I can see, that, like, for the sum daily sum like i want a bar graph for how much the daily sum is so for example it should look like this if i just go or if i make it here so if, if if you get into dailies then you're gonna have to start tracking the date and then group by date to get your data set yeah i want something like that's how this. you do it and then you'd be so it's like oh today 100 bucks this day 300 bucks yeah so that so so what we'll do is to show you like in this sense what we'll say is like number one let's just assume this was the date right so this would be 26 um 10 uh -huh. 20 and then here just get rid of these bar chart there so, we go okay you bar. can't see my um my code i don't think no i don't think so but i think i found the Example of a yeah. So just chart. just copy that bit of code in, and we'll we'll repurpose it. Um, and then the data is also needed. I'm gonna keep it in the same view, or right? Is that okay if I keep it in the same view as the the other chart? Uh, one or second, no? just check. I'm just pulling out the docs as well. Why is this complete? Don't understand why is that complaining? So you want the bar chart 
Okay. Yeah. So where are you looking? So you've got the bar chart. Oh, I can't put yeah, it maybe so... there. I have to put it there. There we go. My we bad. can we can chuck it in there. Yeah. So where, where are you putting it? On top or? And now, have it in a different. Uh, now I can it. put it here, right? Boom. There's the line chart. What do we? There? Okay. The error says can't find variable graph style. Okay, can I remove style? Um, yeah, for now you can. Screen width. Okay, I'll remove that too. So chart config is looking great. Yeah. Data, we can go ahead and show you done that for now. We'll look at that. Um, okay, so it actually needs chart config. So, uh, chart config, we can use this. Um, so go ahead and put that back. Or, I would appreciate if they just give me a good chart. New triangle source line chart bar chart or TypeScript. Okay, found it. So, man. What were we looking at? We were looking for um, chart config. Chart config. Yeah. There we go. I found some kind of chart config. I'm just gonna paste that up above. Yeah, passing. Yes, something happened. I'm just I mean, <laughs> so we both <laughs> Fuck yes, bro. <laughs> um man, it looked way better before, not gonna lie with the orange, but that's okay. You can always go back to that. That's not a it's not too bad. Um what happened to my bar chart, to be honest? Dude, actually, you know what? I'm actually really liking this Bezier line chart. <laughs> yeah, as in the... I think the line chart's nicer, dude. But that, because you would have like... A, you would have an, a, like a, a, an actual curvature to like what you're doing. That's... That's... um. That's true. That is actually true. Okay, 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 okay. All right, you convinced me, bro. Let's fucking go. I'm down. Let's uh, throw this stupid config out, bro. We don't need <laughs> this one. Fuck this one. And guys, if we were going to spend more time on that, all you would have to do is would deep dive into their source code and you'd see the like use cases and then repurpose it as we'd need it. There we go. <clears throat> now for, for this bit... So let's assume that the first one was the date, right? So this is going to be the labels. Wait, okay. So eventually this would be a map. So we would just map Can through we, this. So one thing, one thing I want to get rid of is the periods after the 1.6K and stuff like that. Actually, is that fine? Twenty five. Like nobody says I made 25.8K. You know what I mean? 25, like you just said 25K or 26K. Um, Maybe we can change that. We can, yeah. Yeah, let's just. Uh, but here, one like, so imagine you had this, and then on the next day you would have twenty-seven. So the end go would be something like this. Nice. So you'd be like, you know, suffix is k. Be, that's cool. Decimal places. Um, how about how about one decimal place? I think one decimal place would be a lot better. That's actually a lot better. That's actually really fucking cool, bro. This makes me want to log shit in there already. Yeah. So can you imagine? Like, so we're just drafting out hard data right now. So Dude, we'll look have at, look at nine. how good. Look at how good it looks on a mobile device. Look at how good this is. Yeah. <clears throat> Crazy, right? Look at that. And guys, imagine like if you saw that right like and you saw a curvature to your growth and you'd be like right i'm tracking my stuff and 
um like everything's coming up up, up, up and then you like go down you'd be like oh fuck like i need to get on my shit like you know yeah that's true so we got 3.7k yeah and then here okay so y axis suffix see maybe we don't have a suffix but we have what's stroke width pumps for dog and that's something else that um, looks clean bro Defaults to one. Okay. Now, if you wanted to tally this up and make it dynamic, right? Uh -huh. What we would do is we would have it so that. Uh, okay, so let's get rid of this data object. We don't need that. Where are you? Hold this on. one would be. Now following you. So. Okay, hold up, hold up, hold up. Still not following. Now I'm following you. Yeah. So let's imagine now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hard code some data in here and then we're just going to kind of like go through it. So, okay, so I know how you would do it. You'd do a group, you'd have to group by it and you do a timestamp and you'd, you'd gather all the, by the date, right? So you'd gather by the date and then you'd do a reduce. So, so imagine like every single one also had timestamp, right? Yeah. And then this was a date, right? So imagine it was like new date or something like that. Like, um, and for what you would do is this would be your sort of structure for your for your objects, right? Yeah. Every time we push something in, this would happen. And then what you could do is you could do a user effect for the data set. So you could do set data set. And then what it would do is it would just simply pass this and it would basically go ahead and gather everything on the 27th of November, uh, of, of, of um, October, um, gather everything on 27th, 28th of October, everything on the 29th of October and so forth. Right. And and then you can just go ahead and um, then you would do a reduce on every single one and get the number for it. So your end result would just be one date with the amount. Yep. So I'm writing, date. I'm underneath it right now. I'm writing like weekdays just for now, but we can of course make it whatever we want. Like, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So in this case, you got description amount. So let's do it so that way. Okay, so when you whenever you push in, right, it's gonna say set gigs, let's do two timestamp equals new date. Just for now. Is there like some. a blue gradient we can throw on it instead of the orange in the back? Or like a blue gradient or like a green gradient to represent yep. more like so, income? So background gradient, all we need to do is just change the um the from to you just okay, need to find a blue. I'm just gonna do something dumb and just see how it looks real quick. So I'm gonna do green to blue. Green to green. Oh shit. <laughs> it looks pretty good. Actually, it doesn't look too bad, right? <laughs> it looks pretty good, actually. <laughs> That's not bad. And then, yeah, if we can find something else, yeah, that'd be cool. I'm down with that. And what's this? Uh, what if the background was white and then the curvature thing was green? Right. So. Oh, shit. <laughs> That's too fucking good. Let's make it black. And then let's make the curvature. Is there a way to make the curvature green? Background color, is that what it is? Um, that's the, no, that's not this color. Is stroke, it color? I think that's stroke. Yeah. Nah, that's not it. That's the, that's the color of the dot. Oh shit. Hold on one second. Guys, if you're enjoying it, like smash the thumbs up button. I thought this has been pretty crazy right now. We've had some good retention. 300 people are still watching this, which is insane. Um, but what we would do now is imagine you had these dates, right? Now, what we what we'll do is, I think, as a as a like a, a good sort of point as on this, it would be let's have it so that each date got added as. Mm. So we're like just 
having fun. Really the realistic way of doing it. But you know what, let's just do it. So let's just make it dynamic a bit. So this data over here would be... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go ahead and say... Spread. Thanks. All right, bro, I'm back. So that thing doesn't turn... Or were you figuring out how to turn that like gradient green or no? No, I was just going to get it. So a point that at least like a functional level today, we could be like, uh, it's just like freelance. And then it would be amount you made in dollars, you do like 4,000. But then when you hit add gig, it dynamically represented the 4,000 on the, the chart as opposed to showing random stuff. Oh, okay. Okay. Got it. That's what you're working on right now? Yeah. Okay. That's sick. I got you. Let me let me move the man. I'm fucking tired of following it. All right, unfollow. All right. So now this would be. I'm gonna try making the decimal zero. Data would be spread gigs. Holy shit! It's giving some kind of crazy error. <laughs> no. Um. Fail to compile. Oh, is it because you're working on something right now? Yeah. Uh, can you finish whatever you're working okay, okay. Yeah, go, go for it. What, what are you trying to change? Um, I'm trying to not have any decimal places. Oh, you can change that. Where is the decimal? Where, where was it before? Yeah, I mean, how I can change it to one, but you can't change it to zero. It gives you an error. You can try it, but it's... It, it like what does it say when you do that? Something it says about error. infinity, something fucking, something crazy. You can try it. It just turns everything into an NAN. So what we can do is we can come. We should be able to come on, click it now. Yeah, native. No, it's not fucking native on touch script. Okay. Um. That's uh, fine. That's fine. One decimal is okay. It's not the end of the world. That's okay. Okay. Um, so, and then for the gradients in the back, let's see. Oh shit, that looks gar like garbage. All right, I think we can. You think green is fine? I think for now, it, it would be okay, yeah. All right, all right, cool, cool. Yeah, I'm going crazy over it. All right, all right, let's just keep moving forward. So, so the next thing now, you want to work on is what? To, so when I type it in, it like pop it on this chart? Yeah, so we just want to pop it on the chart. So at this point, we've got this right here. So the, the data comes in two ways, right? You've got like the... And this is the x-axis, and then this would be the y-axis. Um, and th this first data point would be for Monday. The second data point so would be for if, Tuesday. If the date for today already exists, then it should just increment its total value. But if it doesn't exist, then it should add it as a data point. Like for, no, so, so what you have to if do Friday, is... Because if Friday already exists, right, then... It shouldn't add another Friday. It should just like sum it up to maybe the sixteen thousand or closer to thirteen thirty thousand as we scale it up. What what you'd have to do is, is this would be like a you you've got a, this is where data types and, and all that shit comes in. So like you'd have to go. So let's look at uh, go up to the top. So line seventeen. Now you would have to have something like this where you'd have like your data structure would be some shit like this like. You have this, and then you would have something like, um, one sec, so you have this, and then you would have timestamp, right? And then, like, th this would be the date, right? So, how, you know, however, the ugly timestamps come through, so it would be like 10, right? but this would be like that Unix date, whatever, right? Yeah, and then what you would have is, um, you would have to loop over this so let's just let's try and give it a go right so i'll show you what i mean because what you want is your your data will define this entire chart not not like 
you don't want custom logic which says yeah, like yeah, yeah. if this is yeah, the yeah, day yeah, yeah. true 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 i agree i agree yeah you want it to be like if 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 just based yeah. on the data just draw out whatever you need so sense. timestamp would be um let's just do like new day and the, re the reason why i'm doing this is because this is going to be like a hard-coded first value yes. that, so we don't have to keep entering it uh -huh. so imagine this gets defined and then what we'll do is this one would be the first data point that we had so in this case we know it's going to be today's date so we're just going to write new date yeah. and then here we would have let's just say i don't know this one could be tomorrow and then scroll this you can use a library to get these today tomorrow yesterday all that shit yeah. um and then here rather than this what we would do is tomorrow can be a random number but for today what we'll do is we'll say let's just say was gigs so just as a test we're going right. to do uh, gigs zero dot amount times 100. oh shit, where are you just to test this out uh -huh. um, it's working now it's now it's, okay so you see now it says so it's got a timestamp and then it thinks we've made 499 because we've done times 100. So we don't need the times 100 on the amount because the amount is already correct. It's not going to be in K. So we don't need the, the suffix to be K because it's not going to be 500K. We don't actually need that one. So we can comment that one out. Save. And now come back. So you see $500. Yeah. Right? Uh huh. So now we're at five hundred dollars, and then imagine we had a second data point. And I really hate yeah, so the decimals, just... but yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Keep going. What's that hate? What was that? I was just like the. I just really hate the decimals on the graph, but that's fine. We, we can come back. To later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Can't stand can... them. <laughs> it's gra <laughs> it's grabbing the mic like I'm fucking kill the decimal. <laughs> 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 799 and then this one would be like you would have here i mean this would all be a, a very clever thing which is defined in a user fact which gets updated based on blah 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 xyz but then this one would be this and then here dude this getting me excited to just like build an internal app for cp as well like where we can see the daily sales like this in a super easy way exactly yeah so check this out. So now we've got this, right? So what I want to do now is like, let's imagine that this was just like the labels were just, and okay, so, so we need to kind of have a user effect, which, which you, which turns this information into a data set. That's all we need. Like it just needs to turn it into a data set and then kind of have an array. And then that array is what we use as our labels. And that array is what we use as our, um, as our data points here. Yeah. So, Keep it super simple. I'm just going to create two pieces of state. One is going to be const labels set labels equals user. And guys, this is what tends to happen. Like you, you maybe create like a a messy piece of code, then you kind of refactor it, and it becomes super clean. Like sometimes you don't always get to the ultimate position, but then you would refactor afterwards, and then it would look like so clean. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You know, and then people will be like, "Fuck, how did you think of that?" Like. And it's no, it's, it's called refactoring. Like you basically just clean up everything and it just looks like you came to the perfect answer straight away. Um, labels and let's just call this data points. Okay. And then here we do set data points. Actually, let's just call it data. Yeah. Okay. We're using React Native Chart Kit for the graph. Yeah. Chuck, yeah, exactly. The fuck just said Angular? Yeah, point. Or like probably Angular. He said that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, now here we're going <laughs> to... Like the live title uh, is React Native. The Everything says React. We have, which literally says React Native right here. 
Every word that comes yeah. comes out of our mouth is react. <laughs> so what we're going to do is here we're going to say loop over the data points. Data points. Oh man, this, this, uh, this is not a clean way of doing it. Um, let's have a look. There's a really nice way of doing this. Um, you say set gigs, blah, blah, blah. Let's do this. You could just, this would be objects. Uh, can you walk me through how we would manually add multiple? Oh, okay, 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 okay. So what we're trying to do right now, Sonny, is say if, if people make submissions for, you know, the date of 27th or something, right? Like, let, let's say for the yeah. 27th of October, there were multiple submissions made of $300, $300, and $300, right? Those are three entries. Yeah. We would yeah. sum up the $900 and we would put it together with the date 27th. Yeah, exactly. Right? Exactly. And then that. we would yeah. send that information over to our bar graph. Exactly. Yeah, and that. just That's exactly it. what we're doing. Correct. And then we would yeah. use use effect to make sure that we're summing it up each time. Exactly. Okay. That makes a ton of sense. So every yeah. time the use so effect this, fires, we will go to the bar chart and find the same date and then update the amount next to it. So eventually you would have this. You would have like, you would have date 27, 10, 20 or something like that. And then you'd have amount. And this would be accumulated amount, whatever oh, it is. Oh shit, like, check this out, like, bro. Oh, Gabriel, nice, we just got dude. a $20 donation. And he goes, this is some great content, everyone. I dare someone to match me right now. Hello, Sonny from your PWJ hey. calls. Oh, damn, dude. I thought I recognized the face. Of course. Uh, what's up, Gabriel? Yeah. Hey, I love seeing people in, from, from our course. That's awesome, man. Yeah. He goes, um... Oh, thank you, guys. These are awesome comments. I love the positivity. And thank you so much, Gabriel. Appreciate that, dude. Oh, um, I'm, I'm, I'm also Arnold says, I just realized they were scolding me for saying Angular. <laughs> he goes, someone, he goes, what happened is someone asked me, which is as good as React? I replied, probably Angular. <laughs> thank you. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. So now what we're going to do is we've got date amount. Um, yeah, so so look, the the end goal would be to be you you would want it so that you would pass in. I mean, what we should do is maybe stop faking the data. Let's just go ahead and and it would be like you would when you add in, it would be the date date by default is today, and then what we would have is this would no longer be this. It would be our actual date. So we can start in by saying this would be date new date like that. And save. And then we can go ahead and say, um, you would have to, do, so basically inside of that use effect, you would have a group reduce, like reduce. I've done this before. That's, that's why I know like you, you can do it. It's just, it's like one elegant piece of code that you end up writing. And it's always forgetting how you reduce group by uh, time, reduce by date. Dude, I think with three hours thirty, should we wrap this one at the, at the graph point? Okay, and then start with it tomorrow. Um, with the next time we go live, yeah. Oh, or yeah, whenever we go live. I mean. It's pretty fun. Would you be down to go tomorrow? Oh, no, no, no. You're busy, right? You have stuff going on. Reason. Yeah, it might be depending on purely like when my sister's out. But um, 
Okay, cool. Dude, hundred percent. Like, is it, well, next time we go live, let's just build this shit. Like, can yeah, we, can we at least just end it with not this fucking error screen? Can we just make it go back? <laughs> This error screen we get rid of one sec. Worst way to end it. This one we'll get we'll go back to where we're at. So because there is going to be an such an I know I know what we need to write here. It's a group funk that like we need to have a grouping function which is going to group it by the date and then it's gonna it's oh it's, I know exactly what we need. And it'll look really good once we do it because it will just basically group it and then we compare that with a library like moment.js and you can do something called from now uh it's similar to from now and basically what it would do is it would show the far out dates to be um like this would be 27 28 29 but then today it would say today yeah tomorrow it would say to, uh as in, uh, yesterday it would say yesterday that's you know what perfect I mean? yeah 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 it, it has like really good yeah. language yeah, you would have a really nice kind of user experience. I'm really excited um, about it, dude. I want to implement this with Din CP. I know this will be fucking awesome. Like, if we can publish an internal CP app where, as a team, we can click on it and we can just like look yeah. at the income and we can look at because everywhere it's a pain. Like, to be able to look at it from Putler, it's the worst experience ever. It's like not mobile yeah, friendly. No, I agree. And I gotta log in every time. And being able to log like it to, what's up? Yeah. Having some kind of, even, dude, you're right. Like even um, uh, the way we do our automated like texting every day, like having an actual dashboard with everything on it, like, which is interactable. You can do things with it. You can like kind of check more stuff out. Like that being sent to you every day, that would motivate you more than just motivate. a number. Yes, it will motivate you like crazy. And I think that that's important. So that's why. And then we will get a push notification from the top, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that would be sick to see a push notification oh, oh, of a student shit. enrolling. That would be so awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And you, did you know uh, Firebase uh, is, is insanely powerful with like push notifications? Oh, dude, let's fucking it, put it all to use, bro. Let's put it all to use, like, with this. I'm actually super pumped. Let's do it, man. That will be sick. Yeah, this is a good app that we can build with. And, guys, let us know, by the way, like, if you enjoyed this and you want to go ahead and see it, um, like, as in you want to see us build this out, because we're going to build it out for you guys um, and, and show you guys how we go for it. And I think it's awesome because, like, dude, through this live, we showed them how we – Went from not touching React Native in a long time. Yeah. And then you, I don't think if, I don't think you've ever have you have you ever done React Native before? Uh, no, no, I haven't. Yeah. So like literally, like as in, we went from that to the, to the you were coding on this stuff. Yeah. Like everyone saw that. Even when we ran into issues, we went and we done and we used Expo. We came over a bunch of stuff. Like you guys went ahead and saw all of that. I think that's what they loved seeing. You know, like the real side of coding dude we were like we were on this page this is how it started it's like yeah <laughs> ooh, learn basics <laughs> hello world <laughs> that's where we were yeah. bro. <laughs> wow literally and then like when it when we finally see the graph pop up and the reactions all that real stuff like Hell i think that's yeah. awesome I'm excited, yeah. dude. Okay, let's stop it here. Uh, at, especially at this comment where Meaden goes, as an Englishman, I am impressed with the profanity and swearing going on. <laughs> <Yeah>. I love it. <laughs> love that. All right, bro, this was an amazing, this was actually a ton of fun. I think let's keep building on this. This is a great idea because not only are we excited to do this for the people because it brings them value, but we are internally excited because we are working on a project and an app, and then we can actually publish this. And dude, every developer's dream to publish your own app, and then imagine this start starting to get like five star rating, people starting to use it and leave reviews. I mean, that would be exciting, dude. Yeah, man. Right? Can you imagine? Because like, imagine everyone watches us build it with us, like contributes to it. Because you guys contributed to it. Like, yeah. there was plenty of good suggestions coming up with this. name ideas. And yeah, yeah, name ideas. Everything. It's not just our build. It's like all of us are building this together in some ways. It's awesome. Like, and imagine we get that app out there, 
app suggestions, app improvements, that stuff. Like we can get the app to the, imagine yeah, guys, if we saw the app that we're building right now on the app store, like, like number one or like number two on productivity or some tracking app, it'd be insane. It like, would be, um, uh, yeah, that would actually be super sick. Yeah. Um, be so. Yeah, Amar is like, if me too, he goes, if these guys push this to get, there would be like a hundred pull requests because Joseph was like, I want to actually expand on this. Uh, Amar is like, me too. You know, so everybody's like getting excited about it. We'll push it to get at some point. Not today. Yeah, um, yeah not today because the code's quite, quite messy. Yeah, we've left it. But yeah, we, I think, Kazi, I think we should have an internal Dude, we're almost at $300 donations. You see that? We're at 298 Oh my God. <laughs> Two ninety eight. Oh bro, man, bro, hold on. I think how much is that? Like a Sunny, what do you think about uh, internal one, which has the sales right, and then it has like yeah. the how YouTube is doing, or do you think like yeah. that would be? Let's not do that because I think that would actually be pretty fucking. I exciting. think. I think. I think PWA were with it with inter any internal tool PWA just purely for iteration because to get a new release out we just deploy and and you can install PWAs on your phone like a native app. Wait, how do you do that? So how do you install um, it on your phone? I'll show you. I'll on show you computer? after the call. But you know, basically, we me and Kazi developed an internal tool that we use to like to help out with some stuff and the way we sort of handle some internal processes. That app, Kazi, that we built, so uh, I can't remember what it's called, Castle? Or, See, yeah, or I, I know what it's called. CP React. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so so what we built, basically, that will, like, if you, if you go ahead and click on, on iOS, you can click on the little button at the bottom of the screen when you're on a web browser. <laughs> you know that little, that little, oh, Gabriel, it said bump to 300. Oh. Hey, nice shit. Dude. Thank you, bro. That is awesome. We're officially 300 exactly revenue on the chat. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys, so much. Press this button. So it says add to home screen. Okay. Wait, wait, yeah. wait, 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 wait. I don't see it. One second, one second. Hold on. Show it now. So go to, so you see at the bottom of your like iPhone in Safari or Chrome. Uh huh. Yeah. Click it and then go down to add to home screen. So you see it would be, there's a button which says add to home screen. And when you do that on a PWA, you're actually installing the app to your home screen. Oh, damn, bro. Yeah. So you actually install it. And the reason why PWA is insane. So the, the, there are some hiccups to PWA, right? Um, PWAs don't have push notifications on iOS, which yeah. is a bit of a pain. Yeah, like they do on Android. But if it's an internal tool, we can use Twilio for our push Yeah, that's notifications. what I was just going to say. As a text message, we can get a notification. Yeah. Okay. So we can do all our text messages through SMS. Yeah, that would be really exciting because I think having some kind of internal thing where you can see everything in one place would be phenomenal. Yeah, I agree. Then it just makes I it super so, easy. You see, like, the business net worth. You see the sales. You see the YouTube stats. You see all of that. That would be dope. Yeah, and I think even um, metrics that we find that, that, we, that could be, like, you know, really, like, Really like it because there's some metrics that we've tracked before that we have found actually this isn't a good metric to track. It doesn't really show us much. Yeah. And then we've switched to like a different metric, like a daily sort of sale and things like that. Yeah. You know, like keeping track of that and then pushing that to the team every single day and monitoring who's looking at what and stuff like all of that can be done, you know? And, yes. and I think that would actually crush. That would be huge. All right. This was awesome. Should we wrap it up? Do it, dude. All right, guys. Thank you so much for jumping on. We appreciate your beautiful face. If you've gotten any value out of it or entertainment, please go ahead and smash that like button. Gets this video out there for the people. Other than that, I love your beautiful face. This is Kazi. This your boy, Papa React. And we will see you in the next video.
אז 